Are you ready? Yeah, I've been ready. Hit us with the intro then. I got you. Like Zoe, Mama, I go relentless. What up, Zoe? Relentless. What up, Zoe? Relentless. Shut the fuck up, Clyde. The Congo, bitch, you thought. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna be on my bully shit today all for right. various reasons. Okay, <laughs> what the? First of all, what the fuck was that? Like, what we was got, that? We got Jenny. I, I know we, we got, got Jenny. From oh, the I get it. We got Jenny from the block, and <laughs> no, she's, I know Kong, she's from Congo. And no, she's from not, Congo. Not Wait, Sorry, you, can you redo that? Do that again. Okay, so I can, I now that I got it in my head, can you do it again? I definitely caught that. I didn't. <laughs> I, I was so lost. <laughs> like Zoe, Mama, I go relentless. What up, Zoe? Relentless. What up, Zoe? Relentless. Shut the fuck. Clyde. The Congo, bitch, you thought. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I, hey, yo. Nah, that was fine. That was okay. all right. All right. We okay? We good? We good? <laughs> the second time around <laughs> makes it so much better in my head. Okay. I respect it. Ten, to, ten stars. Ten stars. Ten stars. Okay. Ten stars. Okay. Five out of five. Okay. Uh, Talk welcome, to me nice, though. everyone, to episode I'm Losing Count by the week 23. Our Thank Jordan you. episode. Yeah, Jordan episode 23. I'm your main host, Big Zoe of the Relentless Diaries. Tresor is not here with us today. He is living it up nice in Jamaica. Uh, fuck him. I'm glad he got there safely, though. I hope he comes back safely. I hope he has fun there. But fuck him. I want to be in Jamaica. I mean, not fuck Tresor. I like my co-host. I'm a little I, jealous. I He's love in Trisor. the warm beaches right now. I, I wouldn't go that far. Zoe, oh, but, uh, you know. I'm always the fucking bad guy. Anyways. <laughs> Tresor is out in Jamaica living his best life, so he will be back by next episode. But, you know, as we do it, we are always going to bring a guest on. We have a recurring guest, her second time back on the podcast, a year apart. And she actually has one of the top downloaded podcasts, actually, like, yes, ever. Sir. Like, you have one of, like, the, yeah. I think you're on the top 10 numbers. ever Seriously? recorded. You put up numbers. Oh, wow. So, welcome back, <laughs> Kony, a.k.a. Jen. Thank you for coming. The Twitter terrorist is back. <laughs> but she's calm. She's calmed down. She's in a relationship now. She's a big lover gal. She's not hating men anymore out loud. Not out loud. Only on the low. She's a quiet. But how you been? Subtlety. How you been? Talk to us. What's up? Well, thank you for inviting me again, first of all. <laughs> and I've been, I've been okay. Yeah. Crazy okay. year, but I've been okay. It is. Been, it has been a crazy year. I've been traveling all year, so I'm yeah. finally back. Okay, that's good. And last time Tresor wasn't here, we had a man on. We had Top Boy, Zamor. Yeah, okay. So now that Tresor is gone again, we need a woman, right? So before we did two girls, oh, what's it called? Two men, one girl. Now we do two girls, one man. Yeah. With thruple. Okay. You feel me? So those titles were really throwing me off, but uh, you, know, <laughs> you do your thing. You know what I'm saying? But you don't understand what I'm saying, right? I heard two girls, one guy. I'm, I'm just... Because I'm saying, last episode when Tresor wasn't here, we replaced him with a man. So we had two men, one yeah, girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we're replacing him with a woman. We had two women, one man. Sticking with the Congolese representation. Exactly. Yeah. Period. <laughs> but we have a long list of things to get into because mm -hmm. I have a lot of shit that I want to discuss. First thing I want to discuss is if you're on my close friends on Twitter, which a lot of you aren't who are listening, sorry. <laughs> it's just, it is what it is. Um, I still have to talk about this because so... I one thing about me is I'm always gonna respond to comments <laughs> and I'm always gonna fight. <laughs> That's just me. I don't know if it's a good thing, I don't know if it's a bad thing, but nine times out of ten, if I see a comment that either pisses me off or makes me laugh or makes me want to engage, I'm gonna do it. Most of the time. Nine times out of ten, it is me behind the comments. <laughs> right? Okay, glad we established that. Probably so. 10 times at a time. I've, ne <laughs> yeah, I've never clapped back through the okay. account. I, I'll, I'll do it on my own 10 account. times out of 10. <laughs> if you've received a comment back on our TikTok or on our YouTube or whatever about any of us, it's pro it's, it is definitely me. It is me clapping back or responding, right? So we can tell it's you. Can you? Everybody can tell it's you, I promise you. Okay. Can you tell that it's her? You can tell that it's not me. I, I think we can tell it's not you. Okay. Okay, which means that it's me. <laughs> like, that, that means that it's me. So, I am going to show you guys a comment that pissed me off, right? Is it the YouTube comment? It's a co yes, a comment on YouTube. Now, I'm only bringing this to attention. That was up for a while before you saw it. Yeah, because I wasn't really checking like that. This is why I should start checking shit all the time now. So, 
there was a comment, right, on our YouTube, on our most recent episode before this with Myrna. Someone said, women like, okay, listen, I'm going I'm to I'm give him his, his 10 minutes, him or her. I don't know if it's a man, oops, I don't know if it's a man or a woman, but it's Alex Toronto, right? <laughs> he said, the original actually, Toronto. no, they said, women like Zoe going to be single forever. She'd been flown out, hung out in VIP sections, hung out with male celebrities, etc. Men don't want a woman who's out there like that. Then, ex Exilion Cien, whoever that person is, respects to them if they're going to watch this. They responded, nah, bro, men like you don't want a ting like that, and that's fine. I promise you, women who are bad like Zoe want none to do with a man who are in women's business. She would never get with you anyways. So, listen, hey, this, you, is, this is what's crazy. They come to bat for you. That's dope. They did. I appreciate it. Cool. I probably butchered their name i'm so sorry but your at name is kind of confusing to read but regardless i appreciate them coming to bat for me but back to alex okay the original alex the toronto fucking alex <laughs> toronto listen bitch one thing i'm gonna say okay i am genuinely confused when men say that they don't want women who are you know hang around celebrities or go in VIP. First of all, I don't hang around celebrities. That's the thing. Okay. I don't, I don't call celebrities and say, Hey, let's hang out. Like, I don't know. Have I been to parties and celebrities are there? Absolutely. That's a lot of women have. I'm not the only one. Okay. It ha I'm sure you have, you were in London yeah. for like, okay, thank you. Right. Oh, so London. London, exactly. So when men are like, Oh, I don't want no woman who's, you know, been around, and he emphasized they, I don't know if it's a man or woman, it's either a bitter bitch or a, a bitch-ass man, one of the two. So, <laughs> either, like, listen, so I just don't understand when people like this say, oh, women who hang out with male celebrities, specifically male celebrities, or women who hang out or have been in VIP sections or have gotten flown out are like damaged goods. First of all, Damage is that what they say? Okay, maybe they say not damage, damage goods, goods but that saying, is crazy. That's but crazy. They, not da he didn't say dam they didn't say damage goods, but they said like women like me are going to be single forever because of those things, right? First of all, I'm gonna let y'all know right now, right? The woman you are crushing on who hasn't been around male celebrities, who hasn't been in VIP yeah. sections, but are in the back of Honda Civics getting fucked by niggas in the same friend group. What, 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 what's the issue? Because I've never done that. I promise you, if everyone thinks that, oh, because, you know, Zoe and women like Zoe go to hang out in VIP sections or whatever, they're getting fucked. I promise you, my pussy has never popped for a drink, a VIP section, an invite anywhere. So if you are upset because I don't have to open my legs to get into these spaces, say that. I never have. And if I have, I would say it. I can very much say I have never opened my legs to be in any of those spaces. Period. So yeah. if that's if that's what you want, if that's what you're trying to get at, because I'm going to be single forever because you think I'm fucking my way to hang out with male celebrities, you are very wrong. Because the girl you like who's not doing that, she's fucking her way to hang out with Brampton men. Oh. So let's really yes. relax. <laughs> Brampton caught a stray in this. And I'm from Brampton. Shout it out. But don't do that. Like, say, like let's <laughs> stop. Like, let's stop trying to play like, oh, because she does this, she has to be popping pussy. Absolutely not. Are there women who pop pussy in those places? For sure. But there are women who are not in those places who are fucking for way less. So what are we doing? Like, are you mad that you haven't tasted my vagina? Like, this shit is not for everybody. <laughs> that is for damn certain. This is can not I, for everybody. Can I add something? Yeah. I think... The men, because it's probably a man. It's probably a man. Like, let's keep a it a man. It's probably a man. Uh, Facts. The men that are mad at women doing that are usually jealous. They want to be hanging yeah. out with celebrities. They want to be yeah. flown out. Mm -hmm. They want to be invited to those places. You yeah. know, it's and they're projecting essentially what they're projecting. doing. You know, like, and they know that they won't be that guy. They won't be that celebrity that will be capable of flying shorties out and everything. And but be I've that guy, never so. gotten flown out by a celebrity either. Never gotten flown out. You have. Go ahead, girl. Oh, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> Let's get to the goods. Let's get, let's get to the goods. Let's get to the goods. <laughs> no, like, honestly, that was an awful experience. 
I'm not gonna say no name because who person, was it, male or female? It was a female. Let's that get to the goods. <laughs> Let's get to the goods. And what was their they? profession? Were they an yeah, artist? Yeah, were they a singer, rapper? Yeah, singer, rapper. Both. Ooh. Let's get to the goods. They, they do both, I guess. In the USA? No. In London? Yeah. Uh oh. A female celebrity who's a singer rapper in London? Oh. No face, no kiss, please. Okay. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. We'll leave it but, at that. Um, it was not a pleasant experience because a lot of celebrities, uh, they think they're Beyonce or something. Mm. And it's like, because they're so used to have girls getting thrown at, you know? Right. And because I'm not like that, like, I'm going to act like you're a regular person because you are a you regular are a regular person. person. The it was not a nice experience mm. at all, like at all. Yeah. And after that, I'm just like, you know what? Maybe I'm just never gonna get flown by a celebrity ever again. Yeah. Because well, they're expecting too much from you because they bought a flight ticket, like. Right. Yeah. I I just don't get that notion. I, like that shit. Like people need to stop throwing that shit because people do it all the time. Like, oh my god. Like the, all that bitch does. Oh, she she be in VIP sections. Oh, she's been to this person's house. Oh, she. And what, bitch? Like I said, I do not pop my pussy to be there. Don't have I to. Have, I don't have to. It's, it's very easy to end up in those spaces. I don't think people realize that. But when I'm you're saying, a pretty girl, yeah, you can accidentally easy. end up in that situation. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I, there's been times where I, I, the first time I've ever been to that, uh, the notable person's home, it was completely by accident. Like genuinely by accident. I did not know where I was going until we got there. And I said, "Lo fucking L, are we actually here?" And that nigga leaving that comment, that he that burns his soul. You know, he wait, he why? like goes to sleep thinking about that but shit. That makes him is, okay. so upset that he, that you can accidentally end up at so and so's house. You know, like that he he is so jealous and envious. But do you want me? Men okay. are jealous of women so very often. Like you know, I think that's something that we don't talk he, about. He often wants enough. to be a bad bitch. That's it. And, and it's care. like, yo, do you want me to hang around? You know, air quotations, regular men. Okay, that's fine. I definitely have men who are regular, or I have men in my life who are very regular, who do regular things, okay, and I go out with them all the time. But I'm also not going to hang around niggas who are going to have dry mouths in the club because they don't want to buy a drink. I'm not doing that. (laughs) Why? Because I buy drinks for myself. I can buy a bottle for myself, and I've done that before. Why would I want to talk to you when I know you have white crust inside of your mouth because you're parched? In the club. And, it'll be and you don't want to... sharing one bottle. Thank you. <laughs> but you're mad because if I get asked to go in VIP, I'm going to go there and sip my drink and be calm? That's what you're upset about? Genuinely? But like I said, the women who are not in spaces are doing more for less. I'm saying, you want to talk about my box? It's a different story. Because like I said, I don't pop pussy to go nowhere. I pop pussy because I want to if I'm attracted to the man. I hope so. Kodak voice. <laughs> but not because I need something. I've never popped pussy because I needed something. A lot of you bitches cannot say the same. Mm-hmm. So let's just leave it at that. Like, I'm not doing this with these, with these people anymore. I'm not doing this. Oh, all you do. Nah, fuck that. If Tresor was here, he wouldn't need to do reverso, man. No. You got it. You got it. So, like, like, real shit. Like, you nailed let's, it. Like, let's stop this. I genuinely, like, it, I, I hate that it bothers me, but it's like, yo, like, enough is enough. Like, what do you think that I'm, I'm doing? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what do y'all, th- oh, you're going to be single forever because you, you be in VIP. Like, yes, bitch. It's called a very important person for a reason. What the fuck? But even that you'll be single forever, who's telling him that you don't want to be single? That too. I, I think it's just one you of the... You think it's hard to get wiped? It's genuinely not. It's not it's so but easy. wanting to get wiped by, you know, a certain standards, looking for... Which we'll get into this episode. Like, wanting to be with someone who has the standards that you do, wanting the same things that you do, have the same goals that you have, understanding each other. That's a different story. I'm not here for, like, five-minute relationships. I'm not here for, you know, two years and, okay, let's call it quits. Absolutely not. I believe in marriage. Genuinely. I've seen people in my family be, my grandpa been for 60 years before my grandpa died. 60 years of marriage. That's what I'm here for. So I'm not going to rush to get relationships or, you know what I'm saying? Oh, let's be just because, absolutely not. If I need sex, I'll get sex. That's not hard. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> but no. it's like, I'm also not going to play these games with these men behind their computers with 6,500 numbers beside their at Alex Toronto 748923. God damn. <laughs> Alex Toronto catching so many strays. <laughs> so let's leave it at that. I didn't tell that. Anybody does not speak to me. 
about. I hope you meet him on roads. She oh. tells her business. Yeah, it's my business. What the hell? I have, I have nothing to hide most of the time. Some shit I don't say on you because I don't want to, but like, what? The business I have, okay, yeah, I've been uh, to a few parties, whatever, whatever. Lipstick Alley. Oh, whatever, Lipstick Alley, they're trying to find tea on me, whatever. <laughs> There's literally no tea to what? find. They're looking for tea? Oh, yeah, they, people have been looking for tea. Oh, she's a groupie. Oh, she's fucking this. Oh, I think she's, oh, she's, a, literally, if I was fucking them, it would have gone out by now. And if it has out, it's a lie. I'm not fucking anyone. Well, anyone that y'all <laughs> 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 we'll leave it at that. Yeah, I'm, we'll I'm, I'm that just. I'm gonna just. Anyways. This has been a public service announcement sponsored by Zoe Smith and the good folks at the Relentless Diaries podcast. <laughs> Literally. God damn. So. Yeah, like, I don't know how you feel about being around celebrities. I guess I don't know. I just had a very bad experience. I went to an industry party, mm. and all these people were doing was just stand okay. there. Oh. Okay. <laughs> See that I mean, that too. Uh, yeah. But I wasn't wrong. It's like they get invited to a place and they show up just to say I was there. Mm -hmm. Like no one is dancing. No. Oh one is, yeah, no. It's like I was there for thirty, not even thirty minutes. Within the first ten minutes, I was like, okay, like I want to go. I mm. seen a lot of people. Honestly, a lot of people. But it was just everybody's stuck up. No one would, like it's a party. Mm -hmm. Dance. Yeah, and that's how um, most of them are. I mean, like I said, you go. You see, you know, you, I just go and like see a few of your friends, or whatever, whatever. You have a few drinks, you talk to a few people, or whatever. But I, like, if I'm going to a party to genuinely have fun and like dance and get white girl wasted, I'm not going to an industry party. Like, let's mm -hmm. keep it a band. I'd rather Wait. go to a jam in Brampton. I swear to God, <laughs> I swear to God, because I know I'll have Brampton fun there. house party over the industry <laughs> parties. <laughs> no, uh, dead ass. No, but dead ass. <laughs> But these people are boring, man. Just I, I, and a good thing that encapsulates all of that and what you guys are speaking on. I think uh, there's an episode of Atlanta that's about Drake throwing a party. Yeah, you seen in that season episode? one, season one, season right? one, season or, one two. or season two. Yeah, and uh, it's just like I, and like the end of it is like I don't even think he's there, and people are taking <laughs> pictures with cutouts yeah, of Drake yeah, and stuff, yeah. you know. And it's yeah. like it's so be it's so much more about being able to say you had the experience and right. documenting that than actually experiencing it and living in the moment, you know. So it's very true. Yeah, the ministry parties, bro. Yeah, and I also had without saying too much, I had a friend who messaged me. Um, I was like, she's mentioned just telling me the stories, but she's saying that she went to, uh, I'm not going to say who it is. She went to a concert of a very popular artist in Toronto. And I guess, you know, her friend knew someone who, you know, was in his camp or whatever, whatever, and invited them backstage after the show to meet him. And apparently when she went to go, like, you know, they're going backstage or whatever, the guy turns to them. He goes, when you see redacted, don't scream. And she was like, like, she looked at me like, nigga, you got to be out of your fucking mind what? to look me in my face and tell me not to scream just because you're introducing me to this celebrity. Like, and don't get me wrong. I understand some people are unhinged. And, you know, you will get that, that person who's kind of like, you know, not, doesn't have the decorum to meet a human being and act like you've been here before. But come on. Like, what do you mean? Like, don't, what do you mean? Don't, don't scream. scream. <laughs> don't scream. Well, don't scream. Like, what do you mean don't scream? I don't know. If it's backstage and stuff, and it's his green room, and he's, you know, maybe getting in the zone before he's about to perform. After. Whoever. I don't know who this person is. Right. Green, but, uh, but to scream, Clyde? Is there any... We scream? talked about how bad that is if you see a celebrity yeah, we and... Yeah, we did talk about... Run! Yeah, yeah. Run! <laughs> like, no. Like, we've talked... We, that's but embarrassing. That's... Yeah. Really, come on. Read the room type thing. It so, really be the niggas doing that, though. Yeah, I'm not... Yeah, it yeah, really yeah, be yeah. the niggas. Yo, yeah. niggas are groupies. They are groupies. Yeah. I just think it's like, when people say, like, oh, like, don't scream or don't record, I'm like, all right, nigga, you got me. Like, come on, stop it. Stop <laughs> it. Stop. And, like, I get it. You're saying it because, you know, it's probably happened, but, like, stop it. I get it on their part, though, too. I do. But it's also, like, stop it. Because I, you, if you think I'm doing that, me, <laughs> Brother, I don't stop. think, and I listen, I'm fans of people. I really am fans of people. But I don't think there's a single like, artists on this world, I would scream for it. Yeah, okay, yeah. That's OG. Like, I, like, I don't think there's a single, like, celebrity that I would, like, ah, when I saw them. But, like, imagine yeah. it's, like, a vibe in the green room, smoking, drinking, everything, you walk in, ah, like, you would... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure that's off. probably yeah, but like I said, some people don't have the... the I kind of get what they were yeah. in their perspective, man. 
<laughs> but I was a popping artist, and right before my show, someone came in my room and started screaming. It'd be kind of cheese. <laughs> I mean, yeah. But it's like, the fact that people are doing that's crazy, but whatever. Like Imagine I if said. you were right before a podcast, someone just stepped in here and just screamed at you. Like, I'm not famous to that level ever. Hey, Amen. People have definitely come up to me like, hey, like, I recognize your voice or blah, blah, blah. Have you had someone come up to you and they're like, too much? Like, they're coming in a little too hot? And yeah. And you're like, yeah. 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 And like, yes. um, not, okay, I wouldn't say too much, but it's kind of like, yeah, okay. Okay. There's an old boy, uh. Rolling yeah, loud. like that guy rolling loud. I said, "All right, brother. Man tried All to kiss right, you. man tried to like kiss me and grab." And I said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're having fun." Well, he tried to kiss you on the mouth. On the mouth, bitch. On like, the mouth. Do you guys know in, each other? No. He listened to the podcast, and he's a supporter. And he saw me in real life for the first time. And he listen. These eyewitnesses, they they all saw it. I'm not making this shit up. Like he came to me like. Yo, like, listen, I'm a fan. I'm a oh. fan. Let me do I told the story. Like, let me do he this and that, blah, blah. Then he grabbed my face and I said, Dre, hold on. This, I will get security. Do not play with me. <laughs> You're taking it too far. Too far. Yeah, bright. Come give me my flowers and then I, you know, shake your hand, hug you, and then you go about your way. But to try to kiss my mouth during COVID? <laughs> I'm kidding. COVID has run a fucking <laughs> thousands of people. It's kind of spinning the block still, too. What it never mean? left. What do you COVID? mean spinning the block? Yeah. Oh, yeah, COVID never, never left. left. It's, just, it's gonna come back, but it, like I said, it's, it's not spinning. This spin the block. Like you just it moved somewhere for another job somewhere. Like you guys never broke up. You know, yeah. like he's yeah. still. It's exactly. just that no one cares now, but it's definitely still here. Yeah, but in other words, on social media, um, I started a discourse. This is uh, listen. One thing about me is I usually never delete tweets. Okay. Oh man, I'm I'm happy we doing this. I usually never delete tweets. Usually I say what I say. And I stick with it. And fuck you if you're upset. Same. But lately... There was a demographic you... You, I pissed you poked off, that hornet's I nest. I pissed off a very, 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 very serious demographic. I did not know these motherfuckers were that serious. Okay? Pissed them off. I had to come with security today. I, I deleted the tweet because Twitter does not stay on Twitter anymore. The only reason I deleted the tweet... Because I stand on my... What's it called? What I tweeted, which I'll get into. I stand on it. And I'm 10 toes. But I deleted the tweet because I know someone's going to screenshot it and post it on Hollywood Unlocked. I've been on Hollywood Unlocked before, by the way. <laughs> Plenty too. times. Hollywood Unlocked or a Toronto meme page. I do not want my tweets on Instagram. I think I did see it on Instagram. You saw it on Instagram? I think I did. Who's Instagram? I think it was a Toronto page, I though. think I saw it. You're lying. I think, yeah, I'm pretty. Which page? What? The page. Not gonna name names. What page? The page. My tweet was on the page. Which page? The page, though. <laughs> the page that you really don't like. <laughs> the per I don't like the person. Yeah. I was no. That's my tweet was on. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure he was. The I one I saw it on something like that. Yeah. No, nah, I would have seen it. Someone would have sent it to me for sure. I don't think it was on the page. I don't think that one was on the page. Yeah, no, that one. The other tweets. The Bad Bunny one? The was Bad no. Bunny one I saw somewhere, and I'm pretty sure that was it. Where did you see? You probably saw it on but Twitter. The th but the thing, no, I, I I watched it in live on Twitter. But uh, someone posted it, like, I'm after so it. I'm so mad I deleted. came too late, you know? Someone po no, someone posted it, like, screenshotted it, and then posted it again on Twitter. <laughs> Maybe that's what I'm thinking about. But no one posted it on. Because I remember seeing a screenshot of your tweet. Yeah, it was a screenshot. It may have been that. Yeah, yeah. so, well, okay, so before we get into it. Okay, so what happened was, let me look at this person and make sure this person didn't post my damn You need to read your tweet word for word, though. Okay, let me find the tweet. So, and I spoke about this, basically, the tweet was about Bad Bunny, right? I spoke on this before. So, someone tweeted a video of Bad Bunny's. Uh, like turnout for his stadium tour, right? With all the phone, with, with everyone all, sticking. All the lights are on. And one thing about me is, like I said, I stand 10 toes. Bad Bunny is that bitch right now. He is in his own fucking league. There's a reason why Drake said Bad Bunny numbers, it's a robbery. Bad Bunny is tweaking when it comes to downloads, streams, most listened artists, monthly stadium sales like that. He is in his own league right now. For streams, he's he's the same way? For, um, someone posted an article, which I'll find, that he is the top streamed artist on Spotify. Right. Like, there's been articles say that this man is different right now. Like, no one's talking about him. And he's independent, which is the craziest part. Right. Of that, right? Hey, he's independent? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Anyways, 
So someone, t- so it was like this Spanish account because this tweet was in Spanish. Someone tweeted like, you know, something, 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 something in Spanish. Basically just saying, I guess like, you know, look at Bad Bunny's <laughs> impact, right? I don't speak Spanish. I don't know what the fuck this is. So I said, we really need to start discussing this man's star power. No artist. <laughs> okay, I was, I was a little wild with this. Okay. okay. No uh, artist. Uh, accountability. I love not it. Not Drake, Jay-Z, Beyonce, and Rihanna combined is doing this. Do y'all understand how mad this is? Now, hold on. Now, hold on. That's crazy. Okay, combined is crazy. <laughs> okay, I'm glad that we're starting right there. I'm going to say Sing. the whole tweet Sing. was okay, okay except for that part. Yeah, that yeah. is a little crazy. So combined all those people do a tour. Zoe. <laughs> okay, hold on. Hold on. Yes, combined is crazy. Okay. I will admit okay. that. I was getting a little too far in my back. It was crazy. But in my also defense, the only person who's selling out stadiums like that is Beyonce. I know that. I'm not dumb. Beyonce is selling out on, like... The, week, the weekend just finished a stadium tour. Yeah, but I'm saying, like, but the state, like, I don't think the weekend stadium... Jay-Z and Justin Timberlake did one. 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 A tour. Yes. One. But I'm Eminem saying... Eminem and Rihanna did one. A tour. Not a stadium tour. A stadium tour. I think there was only... How many stadiums? It was less than 10, but they did Okay, do, then. No, yeah. but that's they, what I'm saying. They did one tour. Beyonce did not... She sorry, did. And, I, and I also don't want to advocate for it, too, because if you look up, like... Bad Bunny's tour right now and look at the attendance on each one and go up to the formation tour and look at the attendance for each show. Bad Bunny is doing 70, 60,000 and B's doing 40, 50 at the most, you know? Uh, not, some the of the, most, not the most, not the most. No, sorry, no some of them are 60 and 70. Some of them are, I think one of them was like 100. Like that, Wembley. Yes, 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 yes. So my thing is. It's Latin America. I don't understand. Listen, I understand. I, I hit the Beyonce nerve. You know, people. I, like, that, it's crazy because I am a Beyonce fan. I love yeah, Beyonce. I, I but the thing is, I don't do the stand culture craziness. Like I'm yeah. not putting her name in my bio. I'm not hashtag Beehive in my bio. But I love Beyonce, hundred percent. I I genuinely love her. But why can't I say that? You know, obviously I was wild in the tweet. But why can't I say that Bad Bunny's keeping up with her in his numbers? Because he absolutely is. He's selling out stadium tours in the USA and Latin America, right? He is what? He has 30 stadium tours? Or 30, not, not tours. He has 30 stadiums in this tour between Latin America and the USA. And he's selling out every single one, like sold out. So why is it so hard to say, and why am I getting scrutinized by Beyonce lovers to say that, yo, Bad Bunny is keeping up? Drake has never had a stadium tour, by the way. Oh, we know. Rihanna's never had a stadium tour. She's had an arena tour. She's never had a stadium tour. I don't think Jay-Z has had a full stadium tour on his own. He's had a full... Not what, on, more, his, own, not not on, on his, own. his own. With JT, his wife, JT and, Eminem, and he's Yes, done. exactly. He's done... Stadium. But they've... The On The Run tour for Jay-Z, I think, was the biggest stadium tour by Jay-Z's name. But he also had Beyonce. The On The Run tour, yeah. right? But I don't think Jay-Z was selling out 30-plus stadiums. Stadium of Eminem? Eminem, but that was like six shows. Six and then it was six. New York and Detroit were the only shows. Okay, and then with, uh, who'd you say? It was Jay-Z and who else? Uh, Justin Timberlake. I went to that one at the Rogers Center. that was like a tour, I'm pretty sure. There was like a good 50. 30 stadiums, though? The one you should be comparing it to is the Formation. Let me pull That's up. That's what I'm saying. So for, Formation had 44. Formation had 44 stadiums, Right. Which, obviously, that's crazy. So, Bad Bunny has 21 in the United States and 21 shows in Latin America, 40... No, no, it says 21 and 22, so 43 in total. And, like, I'm looking at the first, like, 20 or so shows, and they're, like, 90,000, 70,000, 100,000, 80,000. And when I go over to Formation... There are one or two shows that have 80, 90,000 or 100,000 in Wembley Stadium, but the rest are 40, 30, like high 30s, 50, maybe. And even the venues, if you compare the venues, like when B goes to Miami, she's not doing like the Hard Rock Stadium. Like, you know, the way that Bad Bunny will sell out the Hard Rock Stadium, like that's, that's 100,000 people too. Like, so you were right. Yeah. For the, for as, no, as far I, as the performance right. aspect, yeah. And it kind of is, that's hard for Beyonce fans, black culture, just but to hear, right? But my thing is, it shouldn't, and I don't understand, like, me yeah. as, people were trying to call me racist. Me, my black ass <laughs> racist against black people, because why did I only name black artists? I'm sorry that black artists are some of the biggest in the world. Here, here's Why would I not be comparing Bad Bunny to some of the biggest black artists in the world? Because he can pull those numbers. 
Yeah, you can try. You can compare him to Taylor Swift too if you want to. I don't give a fuck about Taylor Swift respectfully. <clears throat> like that's nothing. I don't care. Why would I not compare him to artists that I hold on the same pedestal? One thing about Latinos, they're going to support their people. Yeah, they're going to as they fucking should. But there's literally nothing wrong with saying that Bad Bunny numbers. And for some, for as a man who does not really speak English, and yes, you know America's multicultural. They have a huge Latin community. Yes, yes, yes. But I'm saying that is that is big. You cannot deny it. I don't understand why people are trying to act like, oh, my God, this is so nice. You're crazy for saying that. You're a Beyonce hater. No, I'm just not an idiot. So would you say, though, that Bad Bunny is a bigger artist than Beyonce, then, in a, as a blanket general statement? No, I wouldn't say that. Because But I, keep in mind, yeah. Bad Bunny's only, what, seven, eight years into his career? Yeah, that's crazy, yeah. He's what? He Bad Bunny started getting big in what? 2013? No, I would say 2018. I think his first album, though, came out. Um, 20 what? 2016? Okay, so 2016-ish. But I would say the buzz really started happening around 2017, 2018, right? So he's about what? That's seven, eight years into his career? Holy shit. His and first he's album selling out 30. His first album was what? 2018. Exactly. That's fucked up. And he's selling out 30 plus stadiums. Beyonce's doing that, of course. Beyonce's the queen. We get the, all that stuff. But she's been here. Thank you. For been, 20 years. Been here. Plus 20 plus 20 years. 20 plus yeah, years. Yeah, doing this. She's Since been here. she was here. a teenager. She should be selling out 44 stadiums. She absolutely should. But Bad Bunny is doing that eight years in the game as an independent artist. And when those Renaissance tour tickets do go up, they it will sell out, you know, 40 shows. And oh, of course. Stadiums, we know yeah. that. But I'm saying is like, it's not, you know, crazy. How many stadiums did The weekend do? Not a lot. Was it well, less than Bad Bunny? <laughs> Just saying it. it. It was more than Bad Bunny? It was less. Okay. I had to. But the thing is, too, with, like, this contrast, um, I'm not speaking in the mic. Bad Bunny, though, like, I, does he have the same appeal in Europe, in places like Serbia and Ukraine and China and Africa, the way that B can go over to those places. I don't know if she, B will do a stadium in, in those places, but I, I know her tours have touched those places before. People were, well, people were be also being ignorant to say that, oh, Bad Bunny can't tour in Europe. He won't sell more than 2,000 tickets. That is cap of all caps. Because there's no way Bad Bunny is going to Spain or even like Portugal like that's not happening. He's he's selling. Honestly, I was on I was in Europe for six months. Like I was on vacation. I was going around, and every time I went to the club, I I heard Bad Bunny. Yeah, yeah. It's so not, you can't tell me that he's not selling. You can't. Weekend did forty eight shows though. Forty eight stadiums. Yeah. I, six of them were in Latin America though. We well, did forty eight stadiums. Cause then. Or no, he hasn't done the European leg. But are they all stadiums? This though? is so good. Yeah. Yeah. 48 stadiums. Not 48, because he hasn't done Europe yet, but everything he has, he did the North American leg, and they're all stadiums. Which is how many? 21. Okay. So he is also compared, uh, but what is the size of these stadiums? Are they like, like you said, like, are they the size of the Bad Bunny stadiums, or are they a little bit smaller, like on the North American side? Because those Latin American stadiums are different. But that's the thing. I'm looking at this, and like he did Hard Rock Stadium and did like 45,000 people. And then when Bad Bunny does it, he does like eighty thousand people. But so what's the capacity then? I don't know. I'm confused by that. I don't know, man. All I'm saying is I'm standing on it. I don't know why that pissed people off. But yeah, people screenshot in my tweet where I thought, oh my god, this is so damn comparing Bad Bunny to Beyonce's insane. It's really not that insane though. I seen your tweet on Snap. I you saw it on Snap? Yeah, people posting about it. <laughs> Snapchat? <laughs> it went far. <laughs> Yo, don't ever piss off the beehive. Because nobody was mad at any other names you mentioned. They were mad at, the, they were mad at Beyonce. Nobody cared Wait, about Wait, who posted it on Snap? Honestly, Do you know what it takes know. to get something on the Snapchat Explore? <laughs> was it on the Explore? No, or? no, no. Oh, okay. like, people posting, like people posting screenshot of it, like saying, oh, like, why would she compare Beyonce? To da, 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 da. But why not? Like, why? <laughs> I don't get, like, why not? Why can I not compare Bad Bunny to Beyonce? I'm so mad I came too late. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, to the tweet? <laughs> yeah, that shit was gone. Because I, I knew the motherfuckers were going to get me on the fucking shade room, and I said, absolutely not. You're not going to put me on the shade room with this damn tweet. I don't understand how when The weekend does Hard Rock Stadium, it's <laughs> 45,000 people, and when Bad Bunny does it, it's 97. Like, that. that's blowing my mind right now. 
That is confusing. Yeah, because uh, what's the capacity of Hard Rock? That means or they're is, shutting is he down doing half two nights? Of, no, it's sure. both nights he's doing 97, the other one he's doing 95. Like, <laughs> okay, what like the fuck? fuck? <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. Is that what it's saying? There's no way that's right. I, that can't be right. Unless they're, they're shutting down. They have to be shutting down a side or something. Yeah. 97 and 97. I yeah. believe that. But what's Hard Rock uh, stadium capacity? If we want to see what that is first, and then we can figure out. Hold on. Because if Hard Rock Stadium capacity is 97, then that means the weekend didn't use the full, like there wasn't full attendance. Which is, could be the case. That the could case. be the case. Um, hold on. Hard Rock Stadium capacity. Because that is going to definitely change my argument for sure. I'm, I'm oh, literally looking at it right here. Hard, Hard Rock Stadium capacity is 65,000, it says. Why does it say 45 here? <laughs> weekend. And I go over to Bad Bunny. Yeah, it's 97. Says, I don't know. Hard Rock Wait, Stadium in Florida, that, Miami right? Gardens. It says capacity is 65,000. On my computer, it says when he performed there that there was 97,000 people there both nights. Something, I don't something's get it. not clicking. But regardless, leaving it as such, <laughs> I think it is fine to compare Bad Bunny. His numbers are doing it. Like, and also, like, why, like, why can't we bring, why can't we talk about him? Why is it so hard to talk about an artist? Who is definitely has his foot in the fucking game right now. Nobody's touching him right now. That's for sure. Nobody. You can't say that, though. Bad bunny numbers is a robbery. Because you're going to end up on Snapchat. (laughs) I don't care. (laughs) They're going to put you on Snapchat and try to ridicule you and act like I'm a fucking Beyonce hater and I'm racist. (laughs) Because I only named big black artists. That's the only artist I care for. The fact that I'm comparing them to him is a great thing. They want you to... To say Taylor Swift or something? Yeah, or compare him to Taylor Swift or compare him to other Latin artists. Why? If black artists are the best, why the fuck can't we compare? Why? He should be, he should be, why is he compared to those people? The fuck? You think if I had my name and see conversation as people, I'd be like, oh my God, what's wrong with you? Did you get messages? What? What? Why? Those people. Why would you, if my thing is, if I'm an artist, right, and I'm coming into the game and there's Jay-Z, Beyonce, Rihanna, Drake, Eminem, Lil Wayne, and if people have my name in the same conversations as those people, why is that not a compliment for me? It, it should be a compliment. It is. It's, that's what I'm saying. So It's the fans of those people that are getting offended. The fa- but there should, be, there should be no reason to get offended. But I think that. he's saying that the demographic that Bad Bunny serves to would get upset by you calling them those people. I don't think so, though. <laughs> no, when I'm saying those people, I'm saying the artists that I named. I'm saying, why would you not want to be compared to those people, a.k.a. Beyonce, Jay-Z, Drake, all the ascent? They're going to take that as a very different thing. Oh, well, I mean... That's fine. So he's I, always ready for a fight. I'm confused. Like, the, 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 the this relentless <laughs> diaries. This is a brave place, not the a safe state, yeah, space. Yeah, but the statement's very clear. If I, if you are an artist and you're big, you should be compared to those people, those big artists, those big black artists. Period. If I was an artist who barely spoke English and my name is in the same category as all those names. That's actually crazy. That That's he, great. He went mainstream and he's known like that and he doesn't speak English. Like, he never did a song in English. It didn't BTS basically do the same thing? Oh, yeah. Exactly. That, don't ever talk about them did they, on yeah, social media. Don't, don't, don't talk about them. I didn't no say anything bad. No, no, I did not say anything bad. How do we even get It's like he wants us to do it. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> like yo, like, chill. Yeah, yeah literally. <laughs> We're all even I'm talking saying, about them. All I'm saying is, he's you I'm know, scared. they are another group. That have a very large following. I want no okay. parts with them. I would see. Did you ever? I don't see really know their music. I just know they have a crazy impact. That's yeah. all that I know. Did you ever see me going private on Twitter ever? No. If they ever find my tweets, I will go about private. BTS. Yeah. No. If I ever say something and they find me, I will oh. go private because they're insane. There's there there are stands like that. I hate stand culture, man. I don't get oh. it. People who are like dedicated to riding for people who literally don't know they exist is crazy to me. Like, to genuinely, like, fight about a celebrity, like, genuinely fight over the computer about a celebrity is, yeah. is psychotic to me. Yeah, to it's have, unhinged behavior. To have a celebrity as your, your profile picture and your header is really crazy. Header's wild. Like, so. that's 
unhinged behavior. You know? <laughs> like, the header is crazy. I'm not going to hold you. The header is nuts. <laughs> it's not new, but it's psychotic. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to leave it at that. It's, it's nuts. I'm sorry. It's nuts. Justin Bieber stands are also nuts. That was... Any stand is nuts. I'm sorry. Like, you just have to stop it. You just have to stop it. It's scary, like, the more, like, harmless you perceive them to be. What do you mean? Like, I wouldn't want smoke with Ariana Grande's fan base, you know? Mm. <laughs> like, there is... Like, if you were to rank the staying cultures, like, they're all pretty dangerous, but, like, just... I don't know. I Having don't beef know. with, like, a nine-year-old in a ponytail, you know, there's, like, some scary <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's your problem. No, I'm just thinking of, like, the certain demographics, you know? It's just kind of, like... I think the worst... Because, like, in rap, it's not even like that. <laughs> it's, it's interesting, stand culture. The worst demographic for stands is... I'm not even going to say because I'll get attacked. The bees? It starts with the bees. Well, there's two scary ones like the that color start pink? with the bees. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those ones are different still. Those We've towed the line with them. The dolls? We've definitely toyed the line with them, but I'm not. I'm not playing with them. They're gonna delete our whole account. I'm not playing with them. Those ones will leak your address, yeah. your mom's address, everything. I'm not playing where with them. Where you work, your phone number, and they'll find out real quick. Facts. Um, spin so, so scary. In other okay. news, also, uh, Michelle Obama. Another one that's happened. <laughs> Michelle Obama. I don't know why, but it needed a. Our lovely previous black first lady, right? She spoke about, I don't know what podcast or what media outlet this was. Was it her podcast? I don't, I don't know if it was her. I feel like she was on someone else's podcast or maybe someone's on her podcast. But it was a conversation between her and another woman. And she was talking about how, you know, she feels bad for, like, younger people um, because, you know, we're so quick to give up on, you know, love and relationships and blah, blah, blah. And she was saying how, you know, she's been married to Barack for I don't know how many years, 20 years yet, maybe-ish around there. And she was saying that, you know, in order for – to be married to someone, you have to go through periods of discomfort, right? And she, there's been times where, you know, you have to, it, it's never 50-50, you know, sometimes it's been 70-30, sometimes it's been, you know, 60-40, um, and she's like, but there's sometimes you have to give up, sacrifice stuff, you know, she just sacrificed her career because of Barack literally being president for two terms. So she said that, right? And obviously, and I hate using the our generation terminology, you know, I just hate being that person, but... Obviously, people in our generation took that as like, oh, so she's saying you have to settle. Oh, my God, I can never get married. There's no way in hell I'm going to be in a marriage where things are just or uncomfortable, blah, blah, blah. Sounds why, like prison. Why, yeah, sounds like prison. Why would she come on the internet and admit that her marriage is terrible? And it's like, okay, this is upsetting for me as someone who genuinely believes in marriage and someone who actually wants to get married, right? Like, hopefully one day I do get married. I want to get married. I believe in marriage. I've seen my grandparents married for 60 years. My parents were married before my dad passed. My aunts and uncles have been married. So it's like, I just, you know, and I'm not saying you should like stick around for bullshit, like, you know, infidelity or, you know, abuse or whatever. But it, you have to be very, very, very dense to think that it, once you marry someone and if you want to be with them until death do you part, unless you unfortunately die young, there's no way you can think that being with someone for 20 plus, 30 plus years is going to be smooth sailing and peace all the way through. It's literally impossible. Like, that's impossible with any relationship. Like, there, like even with my mom, like, someone who literally gave birth to me, we've definitely had years of discomfort or us not getting along or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So why would you think that through marriage, it's all going to be easy, or there's not going to be a point where you have to pick up more and bring more, or a point where things are going to be, you know, things are obviously going to get rocky. You're two different human beings. People naturally make mistakes in life. People get, you know, sick. People get new, but two people move. You know what I'm saying? So why is it? What's the longest relationship you've been in? Oh, barely. I would. I've never been in long, like a long term relationship. You've never been with someone for a year. No, I would. No, ah, what? Actually, yeah, a year. Yeah. Year was the most. Yeah, that was good. Like. I feel like a lot of time, yeah, I feel like that's like a good, there's no reversal man on this episode. Yeah. Like, uh, I wholeheartedly agree with you that, but yeah, I want to. Actually, no, I've never surpassed a year in a relationship. That you, yeah, and you haven't been in like a super long relationship and that's mm -mm. how you feel. I'm just curious, do you think it's, why do girls think that? Like, is it a lack of experience? Because I don't think all the women that are saying that were up in arms about um, Michelle's comments 
Like, I don't think they've all been in, like, five-year, ten-year relationships and, like, knows, like, right. what do you, what do you guys think, like, that reaction comes from? Like, why, why is that? You can go first. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to impose my male opinion on yeah. this. I just... I think it comes from a place of either <laughs> not... <laughs> I know Jen is like, why? <laughs> um, I think it comes from a place of, like I said, I don't know if people have just never witnessed, you know, very good examples of marriage and love. Mm. And I also think, you know, social media plays such a negative part in like, you know, people like, oh, don't stick around. Through, yes, I said, don't stick around through bullshit. And you know what I'm saying? But it's like, you can't expect. Huh? Don't settle. Yeah, don't settle or whatever. But it's like, you can't expect for like to be with someone for years and to, to be smooth sailing 20 like shit's gonna hit the fan but you have to be with someone who consistently chooses you and i think i've said this, I've said this yeah. before right relationships are a choice you have to be with someone who chooses you even through the bullshit every day every single day you have to choose that person there is going to be bullshit there is going to be times where for example say your partner gets a job in fucking ireland and you have to get up and you have to adjust and move or whatever whatever right they, but they still have to choose you, no matter what. Even if you're giving 30% and they're only, or you're giving 70 they still have to choose you, even if you're pulling more of the weight. But it's like, you, like it's, it's inevitable. You cannot be with someone who, it's, it's never going to be smooth sailing. Like I said, my grandparents are made for 60 years. They came from Jamaica with three kids, like three young kids. You think that was smooth sailing at all? living in Toronto, like, you know what I'm saying, or, like, Rexdale in, like, a two-bedroom house with three young kids, you know what I'm saying, you're in a home, you think that was smooth sailing? Like, now, you know, my grandparents were able to buy a five-bedroom or whatever house in, like, a huge, you know, house in Brampton after, but you think those early years, it wasn't, dis it wasn't uncomfortable in your marriage? You think if they were to just call it, okay, you know, we moved to our Canada, this shit is too hard, we're in the small-ass house, we have all these, we have three young kids, blah, 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 like, let's call it quits, I'm stressed out. I, I think it is crazy, and that, that's why I ask, because I really do feel like it's, like, a void of, like, 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 use your common sense. Like, why would you think that it, like, you, you know, so it's, like, why, so why, why do you think that? You're saying, you know, maybe that, maybe you haven't had that representation. Maybe you haven't seen, like, you know, but I, I personally wholeheartedly do think that social media, you know, this soft life, you know, sort of everything, you soft know, life. that everyone's striving for, you know, can kind of fuck up people's perspectives and expectations having realistic ones when it comes to relationships, you know? And I feel like Michelle said something that was very true and like, just and like authentic, you know, like that's the reality of that situation. And I don't know, like I feel like people who had pushback on that are in for a rude awakening when they get into exactly. a real relationship. Exactly. And like I said, people make mistakes. You know what I'm saying? Like, for example, when like your mom comes home every day from work and she's fucking pissed off, right? I'm sure one day your partner's going to be that person too. But it's like what you're going to be like, it's either you discuss that and you choose each other to work through it or you call it quits. Everyone, you're going to have a run, rough patch. Like you're going to have a rough patch in your marriage. It's literally inevitable not to. You can't. You're two completely different human beings from two different households who love each other and now choose each other. But you expect it to be smooth sailing just because what? But even before getting married, like it's never calm and perfect and like that's common sense i actually don't understand why everybody was so and it's weird for me because like i said i want to get married one day but i cannot get married if this is the mindset that people in my dating pool have i can't you gotta you gotta really yeah you gotta know you gotta know how someone is in that situation too like you gotta see your partner without internet you know for a little bit you gotta see them lose their phone like you gotta see them like on vacation <laughs> Yeah. You know, before you make that lifelong marriage commitment. And, you know, like I said, divorce happens. I don't ever want it to happen to me because I, I believe divorce is nasty. Like, it can get very nasty. It's worse. It's more expensive. <laughs> it's yeah. So it's like, I hope I, if I can, make, I never, but it's like, I just, you can't. You can't get, like, completely... You can't use these social media expectations and, like, project it onto your relationship and, like, what you think and how you think your things are going to be, you know? Yeah, and you can't put, like, Marriage natural, ain't soft life. It's definitely not soft life, and you can't it's put... It's not luxury. You don't, and even you if don't want you, soft life? 
Well, what, I don't really know what soft life is. What is it? What does it mean, Rich? No one knows. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I've said it like four times. I'm not 100% I don't know, sure. I, what is it? So, like, what is it? Like, I just, I don't care about life. I'm soft. What is it? I don't even know what soft life really means soft to be life honest. is just being taken care of at all times. Get whatever you want okay. all the time. Okay. But I'm saying you can have soft life and your marriage can still go through a rough path. You know what I'm saying? Like, you think these millionaires. He can still be cheating on you and you have a soft life. Yeah, but that's, that's usually how it is. That's, so, yeah, so it's like, bro, like, we're acting like. Millionaires don't get divorced every day. But I'm saying, like, you're going to have rough patches. So whether the money's there or not, it's like I said, it's, it's choosing that person. Once someone stops choosing you, then that's a different story. That might be the end of your relationship. Because I'm thinking from someone who's never been married, so I don't know. I've just witnessed long marriages, and I've seen what it takes to go through it. But it's just like, I don't know. I can't. I, um, through all this discourse, I, I heard, like, sort of an all maybe not alternative, but just, like, another sort of talking point that, like, men will stay in those relationships a lot longer, you know, and suffer in silence. Mm, you think so? It, it was a talking point that I heard. I and don't it, agree. <laughs> but go ahead. I think they were correlating it to how men are in friendships. Yeah. Like, they will just allow so much bullshit, you know, without checking it or in the... They were saying that men will stay in relationships for that reason. Like, they're not choosing their partner anymore, but they will still go through the motions of it. And I thought that was interesting. Mm. There were parts of that I agreed with and parts of them. What do you guys think? I disagree 100%. You feel like as soon as men feel, <laughs> as, as soon as they're not with it anymore, they're gone? Who do you think initiate divorce the most? Women? Yeah, by very far, because I did read that too. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was part of the. Dis- I think that was part of the discourse. Too. I'm. So I'm by knowing that, why would you think this is true? I didn't. Th- I didn't say I thought it was oh, true. Okay. I thought it was. I thought it was interesting. You know, another part of the conversation. I'm. I don't. I've been thinking about it since. I don't really have my mind made up on it. Yeah, I think women stay around longer. You think women stay around longer? Yes, but once they're done, you don't have a mic. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I do think sh- they stay longer because they want to think about the kids, about all of that, like, family stuff. And men just don't care. Like, they don't care like that. Because they're very, never mind. Because they're what? I have nothing to say to this. I, I spoke my piece. I don't speak on divorce. I only speak on the union of love because that is what I want to manifest. <laughs> That whole discourse on how women are going to end up single and lonely and sad and all of that. Well, I think that's just like what men say when they have nothing else to say. <laughs> you because know, like that's like a retort they use. Yeah, because it, it's projection because yeah. they're the ones that are sad and yeah. lonely yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. have nobody. And because I never seen a grown single woman being sad. Not, I mean, I don't know. Not, not sad at the fact that she's not married. Usually they don't like a lot of them don't want to get married or been married before. They seen that and they're like, I don't want it anymore. I'm happier like that, like this. Mm. But I've yes seen miserable no. men not being married and being bitter about everything in life because they're just not married. Yes, but also it depends on what, what generation you're talking about, like the older generation, because a lot those, that generation, like they're used, like, you know, they've been raised, you need a woman to take care of you. You know what I'm saying? That's why men might feel a little bit more, miserable because they don't have women to like cook for them and you know clean supposed to be taken care of and catered to and all that stuff right so if they don't have that they may feel a little bit more miserable or slighted then a woman who is single might feel well, I don't have to cook and clean for a man you know what I'm saying so they might feel a little bit more elevated I can see that but I still think there are miserable men and women on both sides on yeah, both sides sure. who are like not married but on the original argument I think you're, pro- you're probably right. I think women probably hold out longer mm-hmm. you know they'll put other shit above themselves and it'll stretch out a shittier relationship. I think that's probably something that happens I, more often. I've, I've seen that happening time and time. But didn't you say women initiate divorce more than men? They do, but that's after a long time. Mm. So then wouldn't men be sticking around more if they're not initiating the divorce? If anything, I feel like men sometimes do everything for the woman to come to that conclusion because mm. they don't want to do it themselves. Men definitely do that in relationships. In relationship, I know mm. they Or they'll do, do things and sh- be a shitty person because they... 
What is is that like? A, you're I think like they just say I don't want to be with you anymore. Yeah, is that like a fear of conflict? You're scared of expressing yourself. You don't know how to express yourself. I always thought that was very interesting. How men will do shitty things and make the girl break up with them. That's that's interesting behavior. Do you do that? Very. No, it's <laughs> fucked up. Just one thing. I don't know if do I'm do? if I'm done. I'll just let you know I'm done. Like it's not that deep. But you're wearing your ex's hoodie. Why would you say that? I'm just saying. <laughs> But I'm not mad at you because I would do. I do the same shit. I wear my ex's shit all the time. Tony looked like she about to be little baby in the vault. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you look like, like the voice. You look like you were a little like dirty. The, the, the hoodie is nice. The hoodie did not do nothing to me. Right. So why would I do nothing? But you're in a new relationship. I'm not in a relationship yet, but you know. Yet. <laughs> you aren't. So you're. I mean. Your partner is your screensaver. So, I God mean. God damn. Why are you putting me on the spot? Yeah, I'm just was saying, why are you putting me on the spot? You're not going to put someone as your screensaver <laughs> if you're not, you know, really vibing with them. Or I just in, like the picture. So you have her on your screensaver and, yeah. and, and and she ain't even like that. That's not yours yet? So what happens when it's yours? Tattoo on the face like Krishan. God damn. Yeah, seven. Sorry? Seven tattoos. Just I like mean it. seven. Krishan has seven tattoos of blue face. So you're saying you get seven tattoos? Yeah. You? No, Her I'm face joking. right oh, here okay, on your I'm neck. Joking. I'm like, no, please no, no. don't. Because I, I will never have you back on I this show actually, if you come back here with a tattoo of your girlfriend's face on your face. I I don't believe in... Actually, no. I do believe in it. Believe um, in what? Getting your significant other tatted. Because I'm actually a, a very... I'm a dumb bitch sometimes, so I would do it, but it's best if I don't ever. I think it's a I jinx. Feel, I, I understand what you mean. I think yeah, it's a jinx. It's, it's better if I don't. You ever. think it's what? I think it's a jinx. No, but yeah. The reason she's my lock screen is because I like the picture. Mm -hmm. That was a nice date. That was a nice. That's it. But mm. she's not my girl yet. I'm working on it. Mm. But yeah, and yes, I'm wearing my ex's hoodie because the, the hoodie's nice. I feel that. Yo, that she knows. She knows. <laughs> but I think that's fine. <laughs> I don't think you're. I don't think you are required to give back your ex's clothes. Yeah, I don't. I think don't think. So. Yeah, probably not. No. That, that that helicopter shit is that that was slick. It was good. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I rated that. That was good. The helicopter date. Yeah, I was gonna rate that one day. I always wanted to do it, you know, but I never met anybody that I wanted to do it with. Okay, girl. Yeah. Wow. Oh my gosh, she's gonna hear this. Place. I don't have a sound yeah. effect for this. I, I don't know. Oh, yeah, I've never had You came girls. You. Mm. Well. The fact that I met somebody in the city is insane. So they're from Toronto? No, from Flower City. Brampton Shorty. Damn. Don't ever talk shit about us. All ever the again. smoke that Brampton You're caught. You're dating a Kill Region princess? Don't ever talk shit about God. us ever again. God damn. Period. Yeah, I'm done. Talking yeah, you're done. <laughs> you a Thank pure you. region princess? Too? I Are you am from Memphis too? Yeah. I am a pure region princess. Born and raised. Amber Zad. But Loki, I'm a pure region person too, but people think I'm from Toronto for some reason. You live in Brampton? No. So then you're not a pure region princess? Mississauga. <sighs> I guess. I, I <laughs> Brampton feel, but I Saga know, not. but still, I just feel like pure region princess means Brampton. I think we got, you know, we copyright that one. Hmm. Sorry. Yeah. Got you can be uh, Courtney Park Queen. Huh? <laughs> Is that even English? <laughs> Courtney Park. It's a street in Mississauga. Oh, Courtney Park sorry. Queen. Or Cothra. Oh, Co I'm more in that area, <laughs> okay. too. Okay, Cothra Queen. But no. <laughs> <laughs> you. you can be Cothra Queen. No, Cothra you. Road. Yeah, but. You're a five I and ten, shorty. <laughs> what the fuck is I, five and ten? You don't know five and ten? I've been you're not. You're not a real peel princess. Oh, Ooh. I see what you mean. I thought you meant. Never mind. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, but no. I was saying this is the first time that I like someone in my city. Like all my past relationship were. Well, you're getting flown up by UK women oh singing God. rap. So I'm very interested God, to man. know what that is off air. I'm gonna tell you after it's yeah. done, but you're gonna laugh because you definitely know who it is. The artist. Yeah. What does it begin with? The letter. Is that gonna give it away? Yes. <laughs> oh my god. Are they light skin, dark skin? Dark skin. Dark skin. Dark skin UK woman, rapper and singer. She does both, but she doesn't have much out. She went viral bef because of a TikTok song. Became a dance. It was very like. <laughs> 
Okay, I don't know who it is. Okay, stop. We'll talk about this after. I don't know who it is. Do you want me to show you on my phone? Sure. Yeah, pull it up <laughs> and then we'll get into it. But I just want to see your reaction. Are you going to see that? Yeah. Oh, actually, oh, she blocked me off everything. God. Okay. <laughs> All what did right. You do? So clearly, that is an issue. But look. Can I see it? Don't put it in the camera. Oh, don't get a reflection. Who the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck is that? <laughs> I'm so happy you, you said that. This is not no celebrity bitch. Who the fuck is, is this? No, if you if you hear the song, you're gonna know who exactly who it is. Can I play the song? No. <laughs> <laughs> who the fuck is this? <laughs> nah, but she's she's a waste man anyway. Yo, I love this. Yo, come on the podcast talk about your exes. <laughs> I don't know who the They're fuck is. They're famous this rappers. Is. Sorry to this man. I ain't seen this man in my life. It, it's, it's good. It's nobody important anyways. <laughs> what, what did Kiki Popper say? I'm so sorry to this man. <laughs> I don't know who that man is. Anyways, um, yeah. Oh, I was about to play the song. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> relax. But let's, uh, not. let's not. But um, what's it called? What are we talking about? The marriage. Yeah, you know what? We'll see. Clothes I, and exes? Clothes and exes. I don't think you're required to get back or close back to your exes. I don't think so. I have a lot of clothes that have belonged to men that I've dated, and I'm not. I don't care. Like I've, it never crosses my mind. I put it on. I just really like this hoodie. Right? Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like men. If you're gonna give a hoodie or something like that, or a piece of clothing, you shouldn't expect that shit back. No. And there's nothing that you're gonna have of mine, so I just, I just win. Like, are you gonna come to my house to take the hoodie back? No. I've had a, a guy threaten to come back and take his hoodies back. You can't go to the store and buy new ones. <laughs> I guess he likes his hoodies. They're technically they're his hoodies and he likes them, but I don't care. I'm not giving well, What back. Jen's doing is is sick. Like the gift <laughs> or you know, like if they give you something and then you wear it out and like or, Was that a gift or was it their hoodie? Even if it's not a gift, just, it is it's, it's sick. Look here, I went in the suitcase and I was like, Oh, I like this and I just This is it. the UK shorties? No, 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 no. Oh. That's my ex from yeah, I date people anywhere. She lives in Ivory Coast. You but dated a woman who lives in Ivory but Coast. We, we met in Paris. What type of life you live, yo? <laughs> you be everywhere. So you had a long distance relationship between Canada and the Ivory Coast? No, no, no. I was in Paris for like a few months. Yeah. And I met her there. And while I was there, I was dating her. She's from Ivory Coast, but she wasn't. Oh, but she lives in Paris. She didn't live in the Ivory no, Coast. No, no, she lives in the Ivory Coast, but she was in Paris while I was in Paris too, and we just met. Is she but gonna you hear both this? lived in Paris. For that amount of time, yeah. Right, okay. But she was never in the Ivory Coast while your relationship. She went back. Then she came back to Paris. Okay, that's a very... That's like long distance to different like levels. I need that's, to, yeah, I really need to stop doing that shit. Because that's a little really bit like insane. Works. Did I ever tell you about um, the one time I went to America to see a shorty and she stood me up? What do you mean she stood you up? I like you flew out there and she didn't... Yeah. You got stood up on a flyout. Did she fly you out or you paid to fly? I paid for my ticket. I paid for my Airbnb. And all she had to do was show up. And she she didn't. Treacherous. And two days later, she was at a restaurant with her girlfriend. <laughs> so when did she stop responding? Like, when was, like, I need to understand. Okay, so you I planned, mean. so you told her, hey, I bought my ticket. Mm -hmm. I booked an Airbnb. She said, "What? Oh my God! Great! So excited to see you!" Or yeah. was she moving kind of shaky? No, like it was fine when I was in Canada. When I was hopping on the plane, we're even on the phone and everything. Um, but as soon as I landed, it was an ATL. Like as soon as I landed in the city, she just went MIA. So you're like, "Oh my God, I'm here!" And you did not hear from her ever again. I. Yeah, two days later, she was like, I'm so sorry, I'm busy. She was in a whole other state even. Like, she was not even in the state. But jokes on her, I went to see two people. So I got to see the other girl that I went to see. So. <laughs> the LGBTQ community be wildin'. Yeah. Because. I wasn't sure what where that was going to go. <laughs> so you ended up linking another girl in ATL. Yeah. Mm. Why not? And how? No, I'm not mad at it. <laughs> I mean, duly, yeah, as you should. I'm glad I did that. Cause, oh man, the podcast we'd have if a man convinced Zoe to fly <laughs> somewhere, if and then, I, and then if you got there, and can, he was like, "Oh, sorry, I was busy." Don't even. Well, 
for, I mean, if he paid, then okay, that, yeah, you're dumb. Yeah. Like, I'm about to go out and wild out. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if it was on your own dollar, yeah. Yeah, if it's on my own dollar. Would you say she was at a, the restaurant with a, with another? Let so me, I would pull up to the restaurant. Let, let me just explain how it happened because it was actually very pathetic and ridiculous. That was in 2019, in December, November, and see how COVID was not a thing in 2019. Mm-mm. But I caught COVID in December 2019. But nobody knew. Yeah, a lot of people did. <laughs> so I was extremely sick when I was on vacation to like ATL, and. Um, that's what I told her. I was like, I'm, I'm feeling very sick, so I'm going to stay at the apartment. Like, I'm, I'm not going to get to see the city or anything. And she was like, oh, I'm going to bring you medication, and I'm going to, you know, take care of you and do all of this. So, like, I'm here just waiting on her. And she's saying, yeah, I'm going to come tomorrow. I'm going to come tomorrow. And eventually, after day three, she was just like, oh, something came up. I'm still in, um, I can't remember which state she was in, but she was not in Georgia. Um, she was like, yeah, I have family problems or whatever, 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 whatever. And the next day, she was at a sea seafood place, restaurant. And in front of her was a girl with, like, long nails, whatever. So, like, I could tell it was a date. I could tell it was a date on the story. And anyways, after that, like, I came back to Canada. um, Like, my trip was done. And maybe a week after, this girl had the audacity to... Post her and her girlfriend on Twitter talk about happy six months. And I said, wow. Did y'all sext? No. Mm. That sounds like a movie. Like, wow. So there was My no, like, like, there was no, like, sexual, yeah. like, inferences made through text. It was flirting, but it was never sexed. How flirting? Like, oh, like... We were, we was talking, man. Like, that was my, my little, yeah. My little, yeah, yeah. My yeah. little, yeah. <laughs> but... Okay, because she, I mean, devil's advocate. Maybe she didn't think, like, you know, like. Girl, she's the one who DM me. Be for real. <laughs> no. Maybe no. she think she didn't think it was, like, one be of those. No, because she's she fucking for real. She, yeah. Definitely Y'all did it again. Song. <laughs> <laughs> no, she wrote a song about me. She wrote a song. Yeah. What's with you? So this is another artist? Yo, can we play it? Yeah, what's with me? An artist, I don't know. I could not tell you. And this is, the, she's in Georgia. Yeah. She's an artist. Is she known? No. Oh, okay. I was like, bitch, play it. No, no, no. She made a song about I've, you. Yeah, yeah. Ah, damn. No, but it's like, we were talking, we we're pretty serious, and she made a song about me. Oh, look at this. She, she's been talking about Toronto and Graba in the song. Like, oh. As in, yeah. No, Fronto. That's how they call it, Fronto. I don't know what the fuck. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, she made a song about me for her to post her girlfriend of six months. Mm. That's sticky. Like, does your girlfriend know? That you made that song about me? That's sticky. That's right. Have you had so a song she, made about you? Hell no. I hope not. I don't, I've never really dated or messed with like artists. I've had diss tracks, love songs. Shit. Okay, <laughs> yeah. what the fuck? What was the name of the first episode? So Public Enemy number one? God damn, Jennifer. Diss tracks and love songs, that's kind of crazy. So basically this girl, Chris Brown, you. <laughs> Okay, not not like not sorry. like that. No, not like, like that. I got it. Like she like like the crew she Rihanna like going out for juice on Christmas Day, but I'm courtside with Rihanna. That is basically what that's what she did. She did. But you know, if you if you do that to me in Scarborough, not Chris Brown no. assault. I'm saying Chris Brown. That's like you know how he played crew. You know what I'm talking. You know what I'm talking about. No, we, we will get there. <laughs> we will get to no, yeah. But it's you know if you stood if you stood me up in Scarborough, it's like okay, whatever. I'm gonna take yeah the TTC. I'm going. I'm yeah, going back yeah. Home, but, but the stands on a different country is kind of fucked. You stood me up, you. standing me up in in Atlanta while I have COVID. Yeah, that's rude. <laughs> I ended up miss, missing my flight because <laughs> I was fucking sick. That's disrespectful. <laughs> that is I fucked. missed my flight. That is fucked. Like, Damn. But speaking of Chris Brown, and I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to <laughs> fire transitions. Like hold this top I'm gonna hold the railing with this topic. I am not going to go into it because it is a very slippery slope. Okay. Oh, God. Chris Brown recently was supposed to perform at the AMAs with C- was Sierra involved? Sierra, yeah. Yes, okay, was supposed to, was, it's a Michael Jackson tribute, right? Okay. Michael Jackson tribute is supposed to perform with Sierra at the AMAs. They had, like, full rehearsals, apparently. You know, they had the whole thing planned, you know, choreography, set list, everything. Last minute, they decided to cancel the performance. 
It's still speculation why, but, you know, whatever. And apparently he won an award. Not apparently. He won an award. And Kelly Rowland, she presented the award for him and then accepted it on his behalf. And when they announced that he was the winner, he got a very negative. They were booing him. Yeah, they were booing him. He got a negative out, outcry, I would say. So, I don't know. I can't tell anyone to feel about the situation, about, you know, should Chris Brown be able to perform at these award ceremonies? Should he, whatever, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I, to me, it's like, I think Chris Brown, like I said, off air is Disney damaged, right? I believe that when you are that level of famous at such a young age, you're like, if you do not have a really solid foundation around you, you are bound to fall off the edge, whether it's drug abuse, whether it's abuse, whether it's, you know, eating disorders or anything like that. It happens. Like a lot of Disney, you know, child stars, they grow up to be, unfortunately like not in the best space right Mm -hmm. when you have when you put give someone at like what chris brown's what 15 14 give someone that much money that much fame who's that talented anyone who's usually that level of fame that young turns out to be someone who is disney i like to call it disney damage because it's that's really what it is all of them actually literally all of them so it's like is there like is there a middle ground for it like do we ever get to a point where we allow him to be praised for his talent that is not up for me to decide Mm. but is it unfortunate absolutely absolutely because outside of chris brown and whatever he's done not of what what we know he's done he's still an extremely talented human being right he has you know tried to you know make amends and tell his story and all this stuff whoever accepts it accepts it. whoever doesn't doesn't but will we ever find the middle ground to allow him to be in these spaces is there ever going to be a time where we say you know when is there ever a time limit that exists where it's okay okay chris brown you know it's okay now you can perform here or you can accept this award without being ridiculed is that even a thing do you think i don't think so I, I don't think we're going to get to that point. I think they've – I think I, I kind of think the position that people, media, whoever has on Chris Brown, it's where it's at. And, you know, something uh, that is also unique about Chris Brown in that right is that, like, he doesn't really get, like, playlisted or get, like, you know, the opportunities of infrastructure within the music industry that other artists do. Like, mm-hmm. you know, he – there's an argument that could be made that he's already been kind of blacklisted, blackballed. Mm -hmm. And I think the only reason that like Breezy is still here is because he has a very, very dedicated, like large fan base, you know? Right. So I kind of feel like regardless if there are more people that are offering him grace, I I, I don't think he will be in those spaces. No. Mm. Um, And yeah, like, and I, I don't know, independent of, what he did and everything. It's a slippery slope, like you It said. is a slippery slope. And it, it's like it's not for me to, you know. I kind of feel like he has a fan base that will always keep him sort of. Afloat. In, in that spot, you 100%. know. But I don't see him. Well, unfortunately, the. Being ex- welcomed back into the upper echelons of like, of yeah. music. And I, I don't think that. Unfortunately, place, the no. multiple incidents that he has, yeah. has put him in that spot where it's like. He can sort, like, he's definitely in a better position than most people would expect, right, after some of the incidents that he's had. You know, he can still tour. He's been to Canada. Yeah. He's had sold-out shows. You know, he's Oh, he came to it. Canada now? Yeah, he's been to Canada twice. He came OVO Fest 2019, and he's had a show with Lil Baby here. Like, big shows. So like, big shows. He'll, so he'll he, always be good. He, has it, he can come to, you know, he can go on tour. He can sell out arenas and stuff like that. So he's still in a very good position. Um, But... It's unfortunate to see, obviously we know if those incidents never happened, Chris Brown would be like new levels of fame. You're know, talking about Bad Bunny? I think Chris Brown would be levels that. up. Like but Even when you look at the song that was trending, um, what is it? What's the, what's the song? It's giving Christmas no, or no, something? No, no, no. The Christmas song <laughs> no, he did? No, no, no. Under the Influence. Oh, that, yeah. That song came out 
over two years ago. Oh, yeah. And it trended two months ago. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, Chris Brown. Like generational I said, talent. He is generational talent, but it's unfortunate. I don't know if it's unfortunate. I it is unfortunate because it's like, like I said, it's the Disney damage, right? Like, are we ever going to hit that middle ground where it's like, okay, obviously this, if he's, if he's winning awards at the American Music Awards, obviously he's doing something impactful, right, for his art, but it's unfortunate that he always has and never like he's always been undeniably who he is. Right. You know, it's just unfortunate that he can't like it's like, like from an artist. standpoint. Yeah. It's like, an, like, oh, his people, art was. people think you're great enough to give you awards, but they don't think you are allowed to accept them. You see what I mean? Like, it's like, Why OK. Yeah. So it's like, OK. Like, we can praise you for being I don't I don't know what the <clears throat> award he won was. We can praise you for this award. We can present it to you, but you can't come here and accept it. It's kind of like dangling a carrot in front of somebody. Like, you can hear it is for the world to see, but you can never eat it. Mm -hmm. And I think, regardless, that's a shitty position to be in. I agree. Because you might as well just, just don't include him. And I, 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 I personally, I would rather that me too. than I you like, praise me, but I can't even accept my own award. Or, you know what I'm saying? Or, I don't know if he could, he chose not to, whatever the case was. Maybe he felt like he couldn't. I don't know what the situation was, but it's like, that is the I, shitty part. I, I get it, though, because he was supposed to perform with Sierra for the Michael Jackson. Yeah. Movie, and out of nowhere, he was out of that. Like, That's what I'm saying. So it's I, like, bro, I wouldn't consider him. Yeah. yeah. I, I wouldn't so, show up either, exactly. So honestly. it's like, yo, it's either you stop dangling the carrot in front of him. If, if it's at the point where you don't think that Chris Brown will be welcomed in these spaces, let's just stop. Fuck your carrots then. Like, yeah, let's just stop. Like, you know, okay, he's okay now. He's okay now. No, he's not. Oh, he's okay now. It, like, it's, 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 it, like, it's either you'll be done with it and you don't want him in these spaces because of what he's done or someone of whatever status just wipe, decides that they're going to wipe the slate clean and have him in these spaces. But you can't keep playing this, like, limbo game because it's not fair – to him and it's not fair to like it's it's i find it i also think like weird. you know however someone may feel about the things that chris brown has done before in the past like i i think that's valid you know for of course for them to feel that way but it's it but then cut the looks, line it looks crazy though when you contrast it with other people who have a similar sheet of incidences who are repeat offenders and stuff and you know, like, I don't see them banning Mark Wahlberg from a, from award <laughs> shows or nothing like that, you know? And it's a lot of it for something that happened to, I believe, a teenager at the time, mm -hmm. uh, a, a young black teenager that was suffering for, from, from some very severe mental health issues. Um, that's something that's been well documented that he's been open for, open Didn't about. Didn't he also blind an Asian man, Mark Wahlberg? Mark Wahlberg, yeah. yeah, yeah, so yeah. And, and, but that's why I, I do... <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about Breezy. <laughs> um, that's why I understand why anybody would not. Oh, so you're talking about Chris Brown with the mental health thing? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Because Chris Brown has bipolar disorder. Right, right, and right. He was on heavy drugs too at some point. Still, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, like you know, so to someone like me, I would extend grace to the artist that is Chris Brown. I'm not going to go pay $1,000 to, you know, take a picture with him or something right. like that. <laughs> right. uh, but I'm saying he can still do that. I know. And I just, and I'm, but I'm just saying. People when are you, still willing to pay that. And there's other people who are in similar, you know, that you don't, you wouldn't even think to not allow them at an award show. Yeah. That bothers me. But I also think if you, if you don't like Chris Brown for what he did, I think that's valid too. So I think it's either you, cut, you to, cut the lifeline or you just, you say fuck it and whatever. I don't like. I said I don't know who. Mark who's... Wahlberg has mental health issues. No, I thought I was just misunderstanding <laughs> what you were saying. <laughs> Mark Wahlberg, the actor. That's good. I love that. Maybe I know by face. I'm really bad at names. Have you seen Four Brothers? Wait, what's Mark Wahlberg's like? What's his like staple movie? Uh, Four Brothers. Um, What's the oh, other one? But that, the Departed. Three. The Departed is yeah. That's that's my Mark Wahlberg. Honestly, I don't watch. Or Ted like with the with the with the bear. I know yeah. Ted. Oh, you know the him? guy? Yeah. That's him. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I'm I know him by man. face. I just don't know. The bear name. bear hate okay. crimes though. <laughs> yeah, bear he has crimes. a lot of hate crimes. I think from I heard when he about was, that like yesterday actually. Yeah, he has a lot of hate crimes under his belt from when he was like young, living in Boston, and like used to like be like super racist and stuff. Chris like that. Lee is a pop and podcaster and everything. Like who? These 
these white guys that are abu- that are serial abusers and shit that are eating and are fine right now that aren't questioned about their like I'm saying I don't think Chris Brown needs to be forgiven I don't think he yeah, needs yeah, to yeah. be fine but it's like it's either y'all same energy for everyone yeah then. it's either the industry does not forgive him and y'all stop dangling this carrot in his face. Or you decide, I don't know who decides, but someone decides, okay, well, if he's, if we're going to give him an award, he should be here to fucking accept it. See, it's, a, it's, it's simple as that. Or you cut the ties and you say, okay, fuck this guy. Let him do whatever he wants, but we're not going to acknowledge him. Like, stop it. That's what I'm going to say. That is what I would say that my stance on that would be. It's either you cut ties with it and you stop dangling the carrot or... Zuduchi Wally Wally, one mic. Exactly. Because, I mean, we're not going to really go anywhere with that it's it's baiting you're baiting him for everything <laughs> no fair enough honestly yeah because well, at the end of the day he's still gonna make great music it's not gonna stop yeah. <laughs> won't people stop me will, from listening to people new will reason. argue that his music's not even that great people will say why are you guys fighting for his brown if he's not cap, even that good cap cap that is a unstoppable force and movable object type conversation. There's no productivity that's going to happen from... If, if you think he's not talented, if you think he's not that good, then just if, we're not going to agree on it. <laughs> if he wasn't talented, he would not still be Chris Brown till this day after all he's done. That's... Yeah. Yeah. Because look at the baby. Where's the baby? Oh, yeah. The baby's <laughs> giving... What, is he doing buy one, get one tickets at concerts? Handing out, hand out tickets at the bar. He's <laughs> giving tickets and people are not touching them. Yeah. That's a little... That's he's fine. Done. Yeah, he's done. Yeah, he might be done <laughs> still. He's done. But speaking of baiting... Mm. Clyde. Yeah. You wanted to speak about queer baiting, which I'm going to need you to give a little... <laughs> he did. I did. Yeah. He was No, but she set up one. She had one set up that was gonna be so fucking good yeah, and yeah. it didn't it, 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 yeah, yeah, anyways, keep going. It Speaking of queer or baiting, you wanna talk about queer baiting, right? Mm. I need you to give me the definition or whatever you think that queer baiting is. Cause I don't know if I'm fully versed okay. so as to what queer baiting queer is. Okay. So queer baiting, I guess historically, has been a practice where a brand, a celebrity, something, they will code, they will purposely code elements of LGBTQ community stuff into what they're doing in order to appeal to that audience to have a larger audience. Right. So there are movies where there are two leads or two women Mm -hmm. and they'll have scenes where they make eye contact for a super long time and there's enough where it's like, are they, you know, and it adds an element to it and then it's like, you know, you'll get people from that community that may want to watch that for, you know, it's being advertised. It's like, oh, right. maybe there's a, a lesbian couple here when really that's not the case at all. You just mm. had that one shot, like you're, you're queer baiting. Um, now, I believe there's a, a really popular guy, Harry Styles. Okay. Yeah. Um, Harry Styles, I believe he was in One Direction. And you see how Harry Styles, his whole aesthetic, I you know? Mm. He, uh, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Okay, and he wear. I didn't he wear a dress on on a, on a popular magazine and got yes, in a lot of trouble. I believe so. he got in trouble. Well, just okay, not in trouble, but just there was a lot of pushback on it. You know, mm, the, I guess okay. there was people. There's homophobia, obviously, mm, people who course. were upset with that. That people are no, but be that's not heads. even why people got upset. Well, the queer baiting too, right? Yeah. Because because he has yeah. girlfriends and has stated that historically all his relationships have been heterosexual, mm. and he does this. Some people call it a shtick or whatever, where he's doing these things that make that that appeal to an LGBTQ audience, mm-hmm. but that's not the case with him, right? Okay, so not to interrupt you, sorry. Queer baiting is a marketing technique for fiction and entertainment in which creators hint at, but then do not depict same-sex romance or other LGBTQ plus re- representation. So is that like? Okay, this might be crazy if I say this. Is that like what y'all are doing with the Black Panther actress? Are y'all make, are y'all trying like I don't think she's queer baiting. I think the internet is trying to queer bait her. If that makes sense, yeah, sort of. Because yeah. everyone is like, it's kind of like if she was doing that. You yeah, know? it's. I don't think she's doing that, but I think the producers of the movies knew that was gonna happen. I don't think she's doing it, but uh, it's I, not her for sure. Yeah, the producers are not because she's just being herself. Yeah. Whatever that is, whatever entity or, you know, identity she looks like, she's being herself. But I feel like the internet is the one 
depicting the queer. Like, is mm. she gay? Is she not? Oh my god, is she like girls? Blah blah. Is this? Like, it's like, bro, are, are y'all doing the queer baiting or is she doing the queer baiting? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because right? to me, she's just a hot black woman who's bald, and she, you know, might be maybe who cares? She's a little, I don't know. She masks femme, whatever. But I feel like the internet is like pulling themselves into like a queer baiting <laughs> cycle. Much, they were yeah. doing off that one video of her with the girls, and they were like. <laughs> I, I can't believe high. how many times I saw that <laughs> like, it's like, video like, on my phone. And it's like, oh my God, she's gay. And it's like, is she though? Like, oh, she's, how does, she's not. She's but, not even gay. But like you're saying, you, you feel like the producers knew that. And they almost knew. like, you know. and The that's, producers of Black Panther? I feel like they knew. But that's, that's the whole thing about this whole queer baiting part. It, the producers in general, like, you know, when they, when they put like gay people in a random show that Let's say you've been watching a series for uh, nine seasons, and on the tenth season, there's a gay couple out of nowhere. Yeah, and, and they're only used for comedic relief or something, mm, or as yeah, a device like, to push forward the plot. Okay. Uh, this is, I'm speaking from somebody from the LGBT community. We don't want to see that shit. We don't want to see that shit. Like okay. you know, you can create new shows with new characters. Like even when in Disney movies, like when they, I think they change Robin. To be bisexual or something like Robin that. Robin and what? In Batman. There was oh, a really? there was a Batgirl movie. They what? did they spent a lot of money on it and it never yeah, came like out. But they, yeah, yeah, they they be trying to change characters or like change mm. classics or whatever. And like they, when I say they, I'm talking about like straight people in general. Like you know, like whoever is not in a, a part of the LGBT community, they assume that we want that, mm. but we don't want that. <laughs> Because like they're trying to make money, so it's like, oh, if we get the gay audience, then we'll just yeah, throw a gay character yeah, in there, yeah. right? And we constantly get blamed for it, and it's always like, is the propaganda, is this, this, is that? And, yeah. like, we don't want that shit either. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I definitely see that. Cause, and I find it interesting how they, like, or, like, for example, when they made, like, Lola Bunny and Space Jam, like, what's the word? Non-binary? Yeah. And it's like, Why? Did, like, I mean... Is it like is it genuine representation or y'all just you're trying just trying to, like to check a box check the bo- and exactly. maybe get an extra audience yeah. revenue type it is thing weird. right it's 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 never genuine because when you see a gay character in a show um, his whole like storyline will go around the fact that they're gay and this is all we don't want like I don't know if you guys watched Top Boy uh, no I need to I haven't it seen it but I okay well. There's this one character in Tubboy. She's she's a lesbian. She's like a stud, like mm-hmm. a mask woman. Um, her character has like, I think there's one episode where like she get hate crime with her girlfriend because she's walking around or whatever. But her whole character is not going around the fact that she's gay. She's going through things. She's she's selling drugs. She's doing this. She's doing that. And like we like to see that because like mm. that character is a character and happens to be LGBT. Right, that character right. is not here because it's LGBT. Mm, I and, see what you mean. And, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, majority of the gay representation that you see on the media, we don't even want that. And it's not authentic. Like, it's not authentic. We don't, we don't want it. And it looks like propaganda, but it's not coming from us. Right. Like, yeah. I think, so, like, one of the best gay depictions on TV, or one of the best, like, depictions on TV of, like, representation is Modern Family. I will always think that's probably, like, one of the best, like, I, yeah. written the best TV shows, yeah. shows when it comes to, like... Because it's, like, it's so funny, yet it's very relatable. And I think it checks a good amount of boxes, mm-hmm. at least for me. People might disagree. I think gra- Modern Family has been called groundbreaking for... Oh, absolutely. You know, Modern Family and The Office. For, uh, I will die on that hill. inclusion on that. Okay. So, queer baiting, right? Yeah. Here's where I might be reaching a bit and stuff and just I've been thinking about this a lot, right? Because a lot of it, uh, so much great vernacular, like so many great cultural elements of pop culture are directly created by gay people in the LGBTQ community, right? So there's a lot of aesthetic. There's a lot of, there's so many different things that you can kind of pull from. Now, my question is when we see men who operate in a space that's very macho and some would say homophobic, like hip-hop, right? Mm. And you see a rapper maybe put on a dress or something like that. and Thug. Right? Um, and there are other rappers, I guess, who, you know, they may 
pout their lips at the camera. They may wear a crazy fur something, you know. Uh, Just say his name. No, no, no. I, no, I don't, don't know who you. No, 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 no. no <laughs> I I, you have no, I, you have no idea who I mean. Because there's idea. a whole bunch of rappers that do this, you know. <laughs> there? Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Okay. Um, you know, Lil Uzi Vert be, you know, doing his 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 sassy shoulder moves. You know? Remember we were talking about sassy, right? That's a hard song. Sassy men era. Right? We are in a sassy nigga <laughs> epidemic, oh, right? Geez, now Lord. listen, listen, right? Now I when I see rappers doing that, I go, you know exactly what you're doing. You know? You know that if you do this thing that puts you in that light. There's people who are going to look at that and see that little small thing that you did and be like, oh, this guy's gay or whatever. Oh, like, you know, like sass. Remember how I said when when men get called sassy, it's being associated, like you're, yeah. it's like an attack on their masculinity. I, I don't use for that their way, sexuality, but I understand that. But you under, like, yeah, I'm not yeah, crazy, yeah. right? 100%. So, when I say sassy, so I just mean that attitude, so, bitch. So when an artist does that and they get a whole bunch of clicks and engagement and more eyes on them than they mm. normally would when they do that and everyone goes, oh my God, did you see him post that and he looked so sassy or whatever? Is that... Could that technically be called queer baiting? Oh, I don't think so. No. no. You're generating, you are reaching so far. No, but if you're generating engagement, getting more eyes on you, because you know that that's how people are going to perceive it. So you think because a rapper purses his lips and selfies that he knows that it's going to I'm saying get... if a rapper does things that he knows if people see him, they're going to they're gonna associate him or put him in the light of being a gay person. It would question his sexuality. I don't think so. Don't if think he so. knows it's going to be on front, if, 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 like, there's a, there's a word, uh, sus, right? You've ever heard this, right? <laughs> yes, yes. There are creators, like, there's a guy named Aiden Ross, and his whole thing is being sus. And he <laughs> has rappers come on his stream, and he makes jokes and makes them uncomfortable and everything like is that. Is that what he does? Yes. Because I remember when he texted that rapper about his dick being big. Like, that's his whole shtick, right? Oh, okay. And white, yeah. white guys yeah. in general do this, right? Like, they... they Play off of you white know, guys being queer baited. Oh my god! No, no, no. I'm not. <laughs> I mean, I, that wasn't even really what I'm I was trying to say. But I'm just saying. I. It's clear that they know what they're doing when they post themselves like this. Okay, so you like think that. that young thug wearing a dress years ago, like he knew what he was doing, putting a dress on the album. Not, not dress. really, because like thug, I feel like had something he was doing and try to do, you know. But could it be classified as this? I don't. Is it that? Is it a? Is it a crazy, crazy reach? I some of it yes, some of it no. You can keep yourself relevant in your uh, your thing in pop culture if you can just, yeah. you know, make yourself look sus, and then everyone's gonna talk about it. You know, you and yourself know you're not sus, but you know they eat that shit up. I'm gonna give you an example of queer baiting. Uh, oh my god, uh, you seen Megan and Carisha flirting like that on Carisha's podcast? Megan and Car oh I, yeah, I haven't I don't watch the podcast, yeah, but like, I've seen the clips. I I. Like, I've watched maybe two episodes of that po podcast, but when I seen that, and I, like, everybody on Twitter was like, oh, my God, that's so hot. They're so sexy. They're so, I want to watch. I want to do this. All I had in my mind was, that's bullshit. Like, it's yeah. just queer baiting. But do, but is Meg Thee Stallion, is she bisexual? I, is think, she I think she is. Okay. But she's in a, in a very open long relationship with a with man. With a man, hetero, so she's in a heterosexual relationship right so, now. So, yeah, so it's like, you know you're with your man, so why are you flirting with another woman on on TV? Mm. That's queer baiting. So would you consider, like, Cardi B to be queer baiting? Because she, like, or is she actually, is Cardi B bisexual? She's, she always said she was bisexual. Mm, okay. Because Cardi right. B be, like, making out with girls in her videos. She be, you know, humping yeah. Meg Thee Stallion on stage. But even that is queer baiting. You think it all is, so that is considered is queer baiting? because you're definitely married with kids. True. <laughs> it's, it is. They're doing that for the audience because it's going to react. Yeah. Because anyhow, look when L Lil Nas does it, look how everybody gets mad. But if a, sh but that's what I mean though. You're like, right, you're right. You you're know right, what right, generates right. like attention? Yeah. Like so if a straight <laughs> rapper does it, knowing that it's going to, like, is that not queer baiting? Okay, I can see it from that angle a little bit. It may not be, but I just it, it makes I'm thinking about it all the time. <laughs> like maybe it is because it's definitely going to make people talk. Cause, yeah, because Jen's right. When an actual rapper who is gay does it, it's more like ew, nigga. Like yeah, it's, it's like, yeah. It's I don't want to see that on TV. That. But, when but when it's two a women, straight or when or when a straight man does something that's sus, but they know he's straight, but it could be like that sus. There, it, it is a bigger conversation. It's a lot more engagement when Lil Nas X let us push it to the side. You're using that community for clicks. 
because even if it's bad publicity, it's still publicity. So they will. Still so is August Alcina queer baiting? I'm asking. Yeah, okay. Is that his yeah, cousin yeah, or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is That's it crazy. his brother or cousin or I, not? I, That's a honest, crazy situation. I honestly huh? think it was because it's still the, not confirmed. Even in the video, he, he doesn't say clearly. That's my man, or I'm gay, or I'm. I gay. think that was the biggest. I'm gonna just say it. I don't care. Come, I think that was the biggest queer bait because I still I don't think, understand. Yeah. To this day, I don't understand. Is it his cousin? Is his brother? Is it his partner? What is it? And then they posted pictures together with no caption. Who is it? I, that, I think that's definitely queer baiting. Because I'm not even queer and I'm on the hook. I am baited because, <laughs> like, You're funny is stuff. it his man or not? <laughs> I want to know. I'm getting all, giving all the clicks because I'm trying to figure out, is it your man? I mean, given his history with doing wild shit in the media, it's And not, not because I'm is, pressed. I generally want to know. Like, did he come out? Like, that's great. Like, but, but that was not even... That was not even to come out. Like he just said, he learned how to love, love. because of someone. And then a man sat down. I'm like, what? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then a man came out, and I was like, LGBTQ plus rainbow flag, rainbow flag, and I'm like, is he gay or not? Because even when he came to the camera, he never gave him a hug or a yeah, kiss. he gave him a he hug. Just, you know, but he dabbed him, and then like, what was that? <laughs> no, <laughs> what was? That? I don't know. But was, I think that, to me, that was the queer bait of the century. I don't know. The that century. was crazy. I, I really think <laughs> that so. was. It was kind of nuts. He it still never said it. I wish I could make that weird. episode name. Why? <laughs> Why is queer bait of the century? It was queer bait of the century because, like, bro, I want to know. <laughs> like this, like. Oh, that's the laugh they be talking about? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> I really want to know if August and to this day it's still not confirmed. He's doing that on purpose. I think like. he's doing it on purpose. I think that is queer bit of the century for sure. And I think other rappers are doing it on purpose too. And I think LGBT community, they were LGBT. We keep fucking the name up. LGBTQ plus community was freaking out that day because I'm like, oh my god, he came out, he came out, and people are like, nah, it's his cousin. And it's like, it's his cousin, it's his brother, it's his cousin, brother, nephew, uncle. And it's like, bro, what is it? Yeah, I decided to not say anything about it because I don't know. I'm, I'm actually like so. Yeah, they they right he now. queer baited me for real. <laughs> I was on the hook for and that And everybody's one. like, oh, you guys couldn't tell. He always looked a little sus. Like, what do you mean? That is yeah. fucked. He always, he always looked a little sus. It's <laughs> fucked. That's very fucked to say. I'm not going to hold you. No, it is. And it's like, what do you mean? How could how can you even tell that? I seen a post that said know. one in every three light skins is a little <laughs> okay. in response to that information. We gotta like, stop. People go so crazy with it. We got to stop. <laughs> we got to stop with <laughs> this. We got to stop with this for real. We got to stop. Stop with what? This is the, with the light skin stupidness that people keep doing. We, it's a 20, we're about to be 2023. I mean, it has to stop. It's whooping some people's asses. It has to stop. Sometimes it's kind of funny. Like, I think that's kind of funny. <laughs> Anyways, some light skin jokes are funny, though. They are, yeah, yeah. Some of them be giving me a look. <laughs> but then they get they played. Get a look. <laughs> they they're, get a look. They're funny, <laughs> but then they can get played out, too. It's like, oh, the way a light skin guy closes the door was funny for like the first week or two, and it then was it was like. never funny. Eh. Yeah. I don't know. But anyways, we wanted to do our, our draft. Are we going to do this every episode? Oh, shit. We're going to do this, do this. Why not? Yeah, we should do it every episode. Okay. We'll we haven't, like, come up with it. We didn't set said a topic. break up songs. Oh, I said that as an example just, but oh, I can sad. do it. Back. All right, let's do so it. So we're going to do a three. Okay, basically, we're going to do a three-way draft on breakup songs. Actually, you do it, and I'll moderate. you are moderate? Yeah. Okay, so it's me versus Jen? Yes. Okay, draft. So, you know, welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Relentless Draft, everybody. The Relentless Draft. Episode, um, segment one. We're going to do this every episode, okay? The draft for uh, love songs. Break, or sorry, breakup songs. Breakup songs. Breakup songs. Who's going first? Uh, who? Well, no. Who's getting the number one pick? I was trying to figure out who's going to get the number one pick. I mean, it, it changes the whole draft. I know. So we got to have a coin or something. Do you have a coin? Anyone have a coin on set? Who's got a No one has a, a coin, coin on set? Yeah, I got one. Okay. We're going to flip a coin. You got to flip it. Bet. No. Slide. To know who's starting? To know who's getting first. Oh, you're going to flip it, Trey? Okay, who's calling it? Me? All right, I'll call it. Heads. Call that in the air. Fuck yeah. All right. Breakup song. What is the number one draft pick for breakup songs? Zoe, you are on the clock. I am doing. Fuck. I'm getting first draft. Fuck. Me, myself, and I. Me, myself, and I. Jennifer. For everybody, Cash Doll. You got to say the names after. Okay, Cash me, doll. myself, and I. Beyonce. Hold on, we need someone needs to write these down. 
Okay, perfect. So Zoe first draft pick, me, myself, and I, Beyonce, which I think is me, a myself, great and I, Beyonce, Cash Doll, for everybody. Now, those are our number one picks, ladies and gentlemen, for any breakup song ever. Remember, you want to end up with the best five. Okay. You want to win. You're trying to win here. Zoe, you're on the clock. Pick number two. Next one, Marvin's Room. Ooh, Marvin's Room, a classic, Come on, a staple. You're not thinking, Jen. Some may Come on. want to opt for that as the number one choice, but I, she went for yeah. the second spot. You can see Jennifer kicking herself. Jennifer, you are on the clock with your number two pick. I forgot the title, but I know from Summer Walker and Chris Brown. What's Stretch you out? No, that's not that's, that's a boogie. That's a boogie. <laughs> I forgot. It's a crazy okay, song. Pass. Um, I'm a soul ties Savannah, Savannah Christina. Soul ties Savannah Christina. That is um, your that that's your third. And what was your third? I didn't say a third a yet. Second. No, that's her second. Oh, that's she your went, second. Yeah. Sorry, that's your second. Okay. okay so what's I, the what, what's it look like right now? Four. So Zoe, me, myself, and I is my first pick. Then I have Marvin's room, and then Jen has. The first one was Cash Doll. What was it? Yeah, for everybody. For everybody, Cash Doll. And then what was your second one? Soul Ties. Soul Ties. Okay, my round three, Zoe. Round You're on the three. Clock. Draft pick. Not gonna cry. Okay. Okay. Solid. Solid. Absolutely solid. I have I, a great team right now. You remember to say the good. name. Not gonna. Whitney Houston, right? Yes. Yeah. I don't know why I think, but from waiting to exhale. Yeah. The ladies are being serious and out here I'm with the with the breakup track. Yep. Jennifer, you're on the clock. Breakup song, Cash Page. Who the fuck? I haven't heard. I haven't heard that song, but breakup song by Cash Page. Go listen to it. Oh, I'm about to fuck y'all up with this one. I'm about to fuck oh y'all up with this one. Zoe, what's your three so far? I have my. I'm winning. What, what? This I gonna be a clip. Winning, I'm winning. Though. I got me, myself, and I. Marvin's room and not gonna cry. I Zoe also has three have, haymakers. Right I'm about now. to hit y'all the fuck up. Shake it off, Mariah Carey. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Call me crazy. Shake it off, Mariah Carey. Actually, Jennifer, you have some ground to cover here with the two <laughs> final rounds. What is your third pick? Fourth. Fourth. Jeez. Oh, you don't have that much ground to cover. It's it's fair hard, guys. Who? It's not that hard. After the song that you just gave? Yeah, I know. I hit you with that one. That should have been my number one little key. Pink. Bottom bitch. Okay. Let me get the gunshot Tink for that bottom one bitch. time. Okay. Okay. We fighting back. Okay. We fighting back. Nine. Zoe, fourth round. You're on the clock. Fifth round, bitch. This oh, is sorry. Five. I'm going to keep losing the fight. I'm a bad um, Oh, my God. Key number five. Who's your center? Oh, shit. Oh, I have my last one. Ooh. Who's my center? Uh, I, I could do one. Well, it's going to be kind of corny. No, that's, that's breakup songs. We're here for that. Actually. Sometimes the best breakup songs oh, are a little fuck. corny. Okay, I have two. Hey, you fucked up. You already picked. Uh, okay, uh, I don't know which one to go with. Okay, I'll say one, but after I'll tell you which one I'm talking okay, talk between. Okay. I will do Can't Stop Missing You, Trey Songs. I feel like the other one would have been better. What's the other one you think I was thinking of? I don't know. Okay. Well, I'm going to do Can't Stop Missing You, Trey Songs. Okay. Okay. That's my five. Solid, Got but. It? That's my five. All right. Bet. What's your fifth? Um, Final pick. <laughs> how you going to buy Sydney Renee? Mm-hmm. 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 Okay, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's a good one. She took that fifth round. <laughs> she took that fifth one? You think that one's better yes. than Can't Stop Missing You, Trey Songs? Yeah, yeah yes. I do. I think you won, but... <laughs> no, you definitely won, but I, I think I, you I won. the last one. Yeah, I think she took Okay, the... I was going to do How Do I Breathe by Mario over oh, Can't and Stop. This is, and I, exactly, you should have done, done that And I should have done How one. Do I Breathe? If you wanted a, if you wanted a ah, blowout... I should have done How Do I Breathe? If you wanted to win by 20, 30 points... I should have done How Do I Breathe? Ah! 12, 13 point know. victory. Like it was respectable. You, really? control, you controlled the game, but you How didn't. How do I breathe over Can't Stop Missing You didn't you? dominate though. Yeah, you're right. How do I breathe is more like, yeah. yeah. He's literally asking, How do I breathe? Like, literally built a die. <laughs> Could it even suffocate? Oh my God, suffocate Jay Holiday? Yeah, like I just oh, thought about it right you could have got that no. one too. <laughs> you could have got that one too. You got to pick your draft. Uh, oh. You got to pick your draft picks a little bit smarter, this game folks. This is hard. I love this game. We got yeah, this, we got this is hard. New segment alert. 
New, new segment, segment alert. This is Relentless hard. drafts. The Relentless drafts. That oh, was, that was the one. first time? Yeah, we just did the first episode. Yeah. Relentless drafts. Okay, this is good. I liked okay, it. Okay. I liked it. Hey, man, I, I, I struggled when. I heard they don't you're like calling Soka in. over there. Really? Yeah. Giving me I more reasons to not like You don't like Soka over here? So. You know. No, I don't. I say it almost every episode. I am not a Soka fan. We're about to call the Avengers over I'm, some snow. No, I'm judging you right now, but Crazy. I'm not a Soka warrior. I'm not. I like I said, there's a one-two banger that you know might get my hips moving a little bit. But as a genre, I'm not listening to like I'm not a Soka like 2022 Soka's coming. Up. No, that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> that's not me. Wait, you play mess? Yeah. But you don't like Soka. The way she said, yeah. I know, right? I knew, yeah. she, I knew she was gonna come with the with the with the double <laughs> the double whammy pick up five bullshit. Um, yes, I do play mass, and no, I look. At, I don't. I'm not mad at like I don't hate it, but I'm not a fan. Like I'm not like oh my god, I listen to Soka and I love going to Fenton. and I'm a Soka warrior and all these Soka songs and these Soka artists and I'm going to sure. Soka concerts. I'm not. I, can I listen to a couple songs? Yeah, I know some songs. I know their words, blah blah blah. But I'm not. Okay. Like I. I'm not like I'm not a Soka fan. Like if it, oh put their top genres of music, Soka is not on it. Yeah, me either. I it's literally said commitment. top genres or international air quotation genres are dancehall. Afrobeats is very very close. Afrobeats is a great fucking genre of music. Afrobeats, listen. Get a lot done with that. Oh my god. There's lots of subcategories. Like in bruh, Afrobeats. I hate that piano piano shit though. Like the what's it called? Piano, piano, ammo, ammo, ammo pe- piano. Whatever that Emma. shit is, I said piano, piano. That's a, that's a, that's a, re- that's a restaurant. <laughs> that's a restaurant in Toronto. Ammo piano. I hate that. That's stuff. not Afrobeats, though. I was gonna say what is, that's, that's isn't a it South African? African. South African. Yeah, it's just so it doesn't fall. Does it fall into Afrobeats? No, Afrobeats is just Nigerian, like. Okay, okay, fair, but I don't like that. I went to one party and they were playing the piano, piano stuff, and I said, "What the, the fuck?" Whole, the whole time. Oh my god, yes! And I was like, "All right, yo." Yeah, I wouldn't go. M, I am. What's it called? Ammo. I'm a piano. A- I'm a piano. Whatever. For before their famous video, I called it AM piano once. Oh my god. So I just. That was bad. <laughs> listen, I no. They were playing it the whole time, and I said, "Why is the same song been playing for the past seventy minutes?" It does. Sound I awesome. felt like I was in a simulation. Like I felt like I was going crazy. I'm like, bro, is anyone else hearing the same song? Like it's been the same song. Can't do it. And you see everybody dancing and stuff. And I'm like, are y'all not? You guys did the same song for the past 70 minutes. Are we not exhausted? Do y'all also not feel like you're in a simulation that I'm in? Anyways, y'all, this has been great. Yeah. This has been a great wrap through. Jen, thank you so much. You were a lot. You were very quiet this episode compared to your previous appearance. But it's, I'll give it to you though. Thank you. I'll let you have it because you're wifed up now. <laughs> you know, you're wearing your ex's hoodie. You're, <laughs> trying to, you're trying to be calm. You're trying not to get... Don't be, be coy. Not, you're, with try, <laughs> you're trying not to be hated again, so I'm, I'm going to let her rock. But I appreciate you coming back as your yeah, soft... Yeah, thank you for coming back. You're coming back yeah. as your no soft problem. life, Jen. Thanks. I appreciate Yeah, after getting flown out by a waist suit. <laughs> we got to play that person's song because <laughs> who the fuck was that? It'll be, it'll be the outro. <laughs> Anyways, y'all. Thank you for listening to episode three of the Relentless Diaries. We got two more. Two more until we end season three off with a bang. So keep yes, up sir, with sweet. us. And then big stuff in the new year. And then big stuff. Yeah. Oh God. We'll get there. But like we're gonna we're gonna land this plane for y'all. Land this plane. We're hovering over. There's been the, some turbulence, the landing I know. Strip. We're hovering, but we're allowed to land season three nice and easy. So thank you for listening. I'm your main host, Zoe, and we'll be back in two weeks. Relentless.